northeast corner of the stadium. Restroom facilities are located behind the north end zone of the stadium next to the concession stand. The Great Valley R5 School District would like to remind you that smoking is prohibited inside the gates of Moody Murray Community Field. Once again, smoking. If you enjoy watching our broadcasts and would like to support what we love, here are some advertising opportunities. Our first option offers a 30 to 60 second promotional video, which will be shown on GBTV's broadcast and during halftime at sporting events. If you'd like something short and sweet, then perhaps our 20 to 30 second promotional announcements at sporting events is right for you. We also offer logo placements within our broadcasts. You can choose between partial and constant placement, which will appear on screen at all times or partial appearances during specific times. GBTV also offers shoutouts to our supporters on all social media platforms like Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Having our time deciding? Why not get the complete package with our bundle deal for a lump sum fee? If you'd like to support what we do, email Ms. McElwain at mmcelwain at gbr5.net. as an offense um, for the game tomorrow night we are preparing watching film making sure practices are good um, now it's just we put all the work in now it's just getting ready to play I'm just focusing on what I have to do and doing my job that's it um, and then one thing that uh, I think all the seniors are looking forward to is just a hopeful season I think we've done a great job this year so far, and I think the coaches have done a great job this year so far. And I think we can make it pretty far if we keep working and keep doing what we're doing. So, uh, I mean, I feel like we came together, uh, especially after we, you know, the uh, loss to Raytown last week. And you know, we have to come together for sure to beat Belton because you know they beat Raytown. So, you know, I'd say just coming together. Um, I'm proud of the team, ready to bounce back from Raytown, ready to get on. Get going for the playoffs. Hopes for the postseason is that we go undefeated in the postseason. Um, hopefully make it to a state championship, obviously. Hopefully we go deep, you know. We want to go as far as we can. It's always the goal. The postseason, uh, state championship. We would like to thank our Eagle Media production sponsors for the 2020 school year. Oak Grove McDonald's, I'm loving it. Grain Valley Muffler, family owned since 1983. Eagle Fitness, fitness is not a destination, it is a way of life. Open 24 hours. We would like to thank you, for without your support, this broadcast wouldn't be possible. If you enjoy watching our broadcasts and would like to support what we love, here are some advertising opportunities. Our first option offers a 30 to 60 second promotional video, which will be shown on GBTV's broadcast and during halftime at sporting events. If you'd like something short and sweet, then perhaps our 20 to 30 second promotional announcements at sporting events is right for you. We also offer logo placements within our broadcasts. And those who serve it with the singing of our national anthem.
Welcome to Moody Murray Field. I'm Dr. Jeremy Plowman, principal of Grain Valley High School, and I got my partner in crime, my sidekick, my peanut butter to my jelly, Blake Terrence here today, and we got an important game here. Uh, we got a lot of conference and district implications. Talk to me about that, Blake. Yeah, it's as close to a playoff atmosphere, playoff uh, significance as I think any regular season game can be. Uh, Melton comes in undefeated at 7-0. and The Eagles, of course, 7-1, and uh, falling to Raytown for their first last, last loss last week. But, you know, really, I think the d result of this game could define the playoff picture in terms of who advances and who doesn't because – the winner of this game, quite simply, uh, gets the bye week next week. That much coveted one seed in the district seating and the bye next week. And not only that, but you know, not that you want to over um, assume anything that's going to happen in the playoff picture. But most likely, the winner of this game will only have to face one and potentially none uh, if there's any upsets of the big three uh, in this district. That would be. Uh, Green Valley, Belton, and Raytown, you know, whoever's able to come up with a victory tonight will get that bye week and hopefully, for their sake, uh, only have to face one of those teams, whereas the loser could potentially end up having to face them both and has to turn around and play their first elimination game on no rest. So there's all sorts of implications for uh, tonight's game, but I think the biggest one, if you ask me, is the bye week next week because it's one less chance to get eliminated and it's a big chance for this play these players to rest up big chance for the coaching staff to do it, some extra prep work and such. And, you know, it, it allows you to sit back and observe uh, what happens between your two potential opponents while uh, getting all the advantages of resting and healing and preparing. Well, and then we've got the conference title to play for. Belton has already secured a part of that title. I heard they're a little selfish. They don't like to share, and they want that whole conference title for themselves. While Grain Valley, if they win, would end up being a three-way tie between the aforementioned Belton and uh, Raytown. So uh, conference title implications for the Eagles, it's huge because this is their first year in this uh, larger division within the Suburban Conference, and it would be a big thing to come away with a conference title. For Belton, they weren't successful last year. They didn't win, and essentially with the same group of players, Coach Vaughn, who I have great respect for, has been able to turn their season around from a no wins to no loss season. So tons of conference implications also for the regular season title. Let's start, though, with the Belton defense, a very stingy group, giving up eight points a game. Um, Keller, on the Grain Valley side of things, has a chance to go over 1,000 yards both rushing and passing in this game. Uh, you got a, two strengths of a team. Who's who's? What are you seeing, do you think, when uh, Grain Valley has the ball? So Belton is a very, uh, you know, in terms of their style, is a very simple uh, team on both sides of the ball, really. Uh, this is a team that averages all of 300, that has, I should not say averages, has all of 300 yards passing I believe you season. mean cumulatively. Correct. That okay. would be right. Yeah, they are a running team. They have several different running backs uh, that will run the ball. And most not most notably, uh, what we might call the thunder and lightning on the defensive side. Uh, Dominic Thomas, who is an excellent linebacker, a junior, he has uh, 74 carries for 400 yards, averages just over five a game. And then Aiden Holt, who does not get um, you know, quite the probably the, the explosive plays that Thomas would be known for. But Holt tonight. has 73 it's carries for just over 400 yards as well, five and change average. Guess. And he has 10 touchdowns, so he is really a power back a uh, bulldozer probably down in the red zone. And then, of course, as I already mentioned, Thomas plays linebacker. Holt is a defensive end, a senior leader on the defensive side of the ball as well. And he has a he, sorry, he has nine sacks on this campaign. So that's averaging over a sack a game. Because keep in mind, Belton has only played seven games. They had one postponed uh, back in uh, week two when they should have played Ruskin. But by the way, for any Eagles fans out there who are wondering if, you know, if it's fair to talk about these guys in the same sentence because Belton's got, you know, only one fewer win. Ruskin's a winless team. And this, like you said, Doc, this, this, uh, this Belton team allows single-digit points per game. So 
you can essentially think of Belton as an 8-0 team with the Eagles as 7-1 if you want to, just to make the standings even. This, this Belton Pirates team is as, every bit as legit as the Eagles are. Yes, they are. Um, you talked about, you know, uh, Green Valley, especially early on, had trouble with Raytown, which ran kind of a veer offense, and you're going to see a lot of the same with Belton. Um, and they do have that three-headed monster of Holt, uh, Thomas, and I believe Greg Lyles is the third back. That's right, um, yep. And, and as you said, they don't pass a lot. And really, Grain Valley's strength all year has been the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. Not many people have been able to run successfully against them with Hunter Newsom in there as middle linebacker, uh, leading the team in tackles, and a really staunch defensive front that averages about 260 pounds. Uh, you know, it if, if Belton has to pass, who is that a good sign for? Well, I think it's a good sign for the Eagles front. And, of course, we know that guys like Braden Terry, uh, Trent Knox, of course, dealing with a bit of a nagging injury. He's supposedly a game-time decision. We'll see if he takes the field tonight. But the Eagles secondary has flashed whenever they've had to defend passes, which, of course, they've been playing from ahead so much. They have done it, had a solid amount of teams passing against them. They've uh, given up more passing than uh, rushing yards just because they've played from ahead so much. But I, but like you mentioned it uh, a bit a, mi a minute ago, uh, Raytown was really the first team that's that was able to run with some success against them. You know, uh, up Chrisman until then, early. Had right, a Chris, bit but of yeah, success. you're right. They, they did on their first drive, if especially if I remember right, have a fair amount of success. But Raytown really, uh, throughout the game, had as much success as any team had. And we'll see how that goes. Uh, you know, we, we you were talking uh, in the pregame about how big Belton's front is on defense. We'll see how well that translates into their offensive attack. But uh, certainly a Belton team with a lot of size up front. So the Eagles are going to have a lot tougher assignment than they've had probably all year as far as that goes. Yeah. And now the... The uh, uh, PA announcer, uh, Eric Ball, has just announced the Eagles running in. And thank goodness they're not wearing the black jerseys where we can't read the number. I can see the numbers really well. We're going to be able to shout out players' names hey, today. Finally, Pretty exciting. Right? Finally. Um, yeah, that wasn't. They're playing the fight song. This is two good teams. How much nerves do each of these teams have right now heading into a game? Some of these kids, this is their first game with this big of implications. Yeah, I, I mean, you know the Eagles want to redeem after the, uh, the they fell in the playoffs last year to uh, Platte City. And, of course, Belton, a uh, team that really hasn't tasted uh, playoff football in meaningful fashion. Now, of course, every team technically gets in, uh, but... You know, Belton, as you mentioned, winless last year. So this is really a worst to first situation. So, yeah, like you said, a lot of potential fish out of water scenarios. But I think athletes in general and football players especially are such um, creatures of the moment. And they focus so much on, you know, in-game execution. I, I think uh, once the ball's kicked off, we're going to see uh, – a lot of aggressive uh, front on front because like you mentioned this before how similar these two teams are and I want to go back really quick uh, to something you touched on just very briefly mentioned how good the Eagles front has been at stopping the run Hunter Newsom leading uh, the Eagles in tackles as he pretty much has I think uh, more or less from the get-go I think he's led this Eagles team in tackles uh, most of the year he now has uh, just over 80 tackles if you combine his 57 to solos and 52 assists. But Belton really runs a similar group, and I think it's almost even more impressive because they have a guy, a sophomore, uh, listed here as number 28. We'll see if you can keep an eye on that. But his name is Ethan Yinger, and he leads them in tackles. And we call his heavy hits Bell Yingers, correct? Uh, that's You said we were doing that, so yes, we were doing that. <laughs> okay, we're doing it. It's... Our camera guy loves it. So. It's, it's, I, I think it's, I think it's uh, very rough, but we're going to roll with it. <laughs> okay. Hey, one other thing. You know, Belton has played only one team with the winning record all year, and that is the aforementioned Raytown. Raytown, they beat 22-6 to six rather handily, but that is the only team they've played that's had a winning record. Right. And Meanwhile, you know, Grain Valley has played a Smithville. They played a Park Hill South, both ranked locally. These two teams are both ranked in Class 5 for the state of Missouri. I believe Belton 6. Grain Valley might be 7th, if I remember correctly. But if I don't, you guys probably won't know the difference anyway. Right. And 
Well, I think that's why, you know, we always get quotes from uh, the coaches. And Pete Carpino, a defensive guy, pr provides a lot of great coaches. And, you know, he's talking about Belton, and he say they play with a lot of confidence it, when they're clicking. So we have to disrupt their flow and do what to them what we got done to us last week when we got knocked off our horse. And I think that is really going to be – both metaphorically true and true in a literal football sense. Uh, we were talking a bit pregame, and, you know, both these teams, especially uh, the Eagles, you know, Cole Keller should, well, probably will uh, if, if this game is as uh, close. Okay, and real quick, they uh, Belton won the toss but deferred. Uh, Grain Valley's going to receive. Right. And uh, we're ready to play some football. Grain Valley will get the opening kickoff. So here we are ready to go. I believe uh, the kicker is their tight end defense alignment, Brett Gerke. Twin brother of uh, the quarterback. Twin brother of the quarterback, Brain Gerke, who only has to go one way as opposed to his brother who has to go two and is the kicker. Um, and they do a lot of that. We'll talk about it. I as believe the game goes they're on. the yeah. son of Kevin Gerke. I'm not positive, folks, at Belton, but if he is, he was a great basketball coach. I coached against numerous times at Belton. Had a lot of great teams with Michael Sylvan and other teams way back long ago when I coached. So deep for the Eagles are, uh, well, that's interesting. Cole Keller and uh, Keegan Hart are deep. Cole Keller has never been deep before. I'm wondering we know if he's this a running is going to be some so. trickery. Yeah. We'll see, but... Uh, we know he can run the football. We know he can run with the football. We do. Very hands, rarely so. do you see your uh, quarterback, quarterback keep yeah. on kick returns, but let's see what happens here. Always interested to see how strong a leg the kicker has, whether touchbacks are going to be the norm or whether you're going to get some return opportunities. Yeah. Eagles haven't made a ton of huge special teams plays so far this year. Tonight against a team like Belton would be a great time to get started there. Well, and I was going to say that our uh, Keegan Hart had a punt return called back for a penalty, but did have a punt return the sophomore did for a touchdown. Here we go with the kickoff. Hart gets it at the six-yard line. No trickery. He's to the 26. He's got to get around a guy. Not quite. That's a 24-yard return to the 30-yard line. Brought down on the plane by number three, senior Darius Johnson of Belton. Eagles take over, first and 10 on their own 30-yard line. Solid starting field position. Nice return there. Very interesting that uh, that Keller was back there, huh? Yeah, nothing really came of it, I suppose. I wonder, we'll see if Well, we they didn't kick to that. him. I wonder True, if they yeah. kick to him, if he'll toss the ball to someone, or is he just going to run it? Are they pulling out all the stops for this game? Keller is in shotgun. Right up the middle to Jackson Wyatt. He is brought down after virtually no gain. Number 45, Jackson Wyatt. The ball and of course, the Wyatt, uh, the Eagles main running back, although as we mentioned uh, just, there really are a ton of similarities between these two teams. Both feature multiple backs who are more than capable yeah. of gashing. He did, he did gain about a yard on the play. We'll give him a second down and nine. It was rough going. It was a run dive play right up the middle. Wyatt usually has a lot of success and was stopped pretty clear. And this belt front clear. is big, so we're, you're going to have to... And this is Keller keeping it. Kind of an option keeper. There's no option back. And he twirls around and is able to get the first down on his last surge. That's a 10-yard gain for Keller, averaging about 8 yards per carry on the year. And it is first and 10 for the Eagles. Yeah, and that's what I was about to say earlier before kickoff commenced. Uh, Cole Keller probably will pass 1,000 yards both on the ground and through the air tonight. 863 yards on the ground coming in and just added to They that hope there. he does go over 1,000 on the ground. That probably means it's a Grain Valley yeah, win if that right. does happen. We'll see. Goes to wide up the middle, keeps his feet churning. That's two yards on the carry. 961 on through the air, yep. so almost certainly we'll do that. We'll see if he can. He's brought he's down by number five, Aiden Holt, who you yep. uh, featured yep. early in the game. Uh, Holt, the two, one of the five two-way players for Belton. That could be a factor here. Grain Valley has one two-way player for the most part, and uh, Belton has five kids playing two-way in a game like this. I, they need to be able to make sure they get them some rest on one of the sides of the, the ball. The Eagles' one guy you're referring to, I assume, would be Donovan, Donovan, McBride. Donovan McBride. Yes, yes. And that's a pass over the middle, just a quick little dump off. About a seven, eight-yard gain, accurate pass to his favorite receiver, Parker Bosserman. 
Brings up a third down and one at the Eagles' own 49-yard line. This, this is, is two-down territory, Right, and, and this is a perfect. Do you think this is a Wyatt or a Keller keeper kind of third and one? Is this What do you do against a team like Belton? I don't know if this is a Wyatt up the middle uh, play. I, I think they'll let Keller make yeah, a decision Yeah, as big as Belton is, you can't afford any de even a split-second delay now on the handoff. they have nobody deep in the middle if they did fake it. That's just Keller keeping it. Oh, and he gets a first down, but he pays for it dearly. Um, he's brought down on the play by, I believe, number two, Nico Anderson, coming up from the cornerback spot, and he stood Keller up and brought him right down to the ground. So it was a two-yard gain, first and 10 in Belton territory at the 49. Keller can take a hit. You just don't know how many hits you want him to take. Right. You know what I mean? Well, and you know that especially guys who can build up speed like linebackers and corners uh, running toward him. You know, anytime your quarterback is running with the ball, they're going to look to lay a hit. And that's Wyatt went right up the middle, broke it out to the outside. And Wyatt isn't fancy, is it? He keeps his feet moving. Yep. Hits a hole and goes. That's about a nine-yard gain. And at second down and one, Eagles get immediately on the ball. As four out of five plays have been running plays, and that was Wyatt's first uh, sign Maybe of daylight. Maybe go deep on second and short here if they leave the middle open again? I would, but they're not. Uh, Keller keeps it after fake it to the dive back, and he picks up we'll about uh, seven yards, another Eagles first, first down. down. And they I, continue to drive, and this is just what the doctor ordered for the first drive after some early this struggles. This is not easy Raytown. to do against a team like Belton. I, mean, I, I think on, this is going to be, in general, in terms of the ball movement, this is going to be what both sides are wanting to do all night. The Eagles are able to do it so yep. far. So they're on the 34-yard line, taking up a little over three minutes. Uh, the clock stops on out-of-bounds and on first downs a little bit, so it moves a little slower. Uh, so the clock will start running as soon as this ball gets snapped by Donovan McBride, who's probably going to be a two-way All-State player, if I had to guess. And he's going to be tired after tonight. Yes, game. he is. That's Wyatt up the middle, bounces off one guy, two guys. He's not a huge kid, maybe 5'8", 170, but he just runs up the field. I think he got himself six yards on the play. He's up over 20 yards already, clock's running, and it is second down and a long four yeah, or a you, short five, your choice. Wyatt is what you call a north and south running back. Yes, he is. That's Keller dropping back, doesn't see anything he likes. He now breaks to the left side, throws down, and it is off the fingertips of, I believe, Parker Stone. If I were him, I might have tucked it right there. Looked like he had a little room to run. Um, there is a penalty on the play. Ineligible man downfield, which tends to happen when you're back uh, scrambling around looking to pass for a while. So that's their first penalty of the game, first penalty by either team. Right. Now second we'll, down and nine. And that's the real problem there is a legal man downfield, unlike like holding or something, uh, you don't get your down back, so they lost the down at second down. Yes, it is. Second down and nine. Well, no, I think in high school you don't lose it because they had that first run of six Oh, yards, you're right. So, yeah. yeah, we're second down and nine. I lost track of the downs. Whoops. And that is Jackson Wyatt up the middle, and he's still going. He drags some tacklers to the 19-yard line. That's a 14-yard gain. And as Eric Ball says, to move the chains. And that and is a first down. I can yep. I can count again. First and 10 to the 20-yard line. Eight minutes now. This is a four-minute drive, and they've gotten to first down each time. Keller throws a fade. Oh, just over the outstretched arms of Bosserman. Bosserman must have about, what, five, five six TDs on the year receiving? Well, I can verify I know you that got the you. stats. Yep. You're my stat he, man. Parker Bossman has seven touchdowns. On seven this. touchdowns. I think you, one rushing. You said rushing. five, six. You should have just kept counting. No, no. I said receiving touchdowns. He's had one rushing touchdown. Hence, ah, okay. I was correct again. <laughs> you, your ability to manipulate numbers to fit what you say is quite uh, admirable. I, I do have a skill. Okay, here we go. Keller, once again, one back in the backfield. Second down and 10. That's an end round to number 13, Carter Verlinick. Oh, breaks to the outside. Looks like he got clotheslined, but either way, picked up 13 yards, and that's going to be first and goal. Um, 
for the Eagles. Nice play there. He must not have had him around. But I hadn't seen Verlinick carry the ball yet. He's full no. of surprises this and he, year. And he, well, and he really is one of the Eagles' big play guys. Of course, only two touchdowns, but two. They're both long catches. Uh, guy yeah, who he averages. used to be averaging like 120 yards per reception or something like that, right? Yeah, it's something like that. That that seems impossible, but that's why up the middle and into the end zone. That's a seven-yard touchdown. That is an impressive drive. That, that is, was a four-minute. The Eagles would be happy to drive. duplicate that drive every single time. That is exactly what they want. Yep. Defense looks fired up, ready to go. I don't think Belton's had anybody score on them on a first drive this year. They've been so stingy giving up points. Jackson Wyatt also had seven, now eight touchdowns on the year. Janes is on for the extra point. Snap good, hold good, kick, not as good. It was off to the right, and it'll be 6-0. Uh, kind of an important extra point there. And Janes um, has been nearly automatic, of course. Hadn't missed until uh, two weeks ago, but he's still yep. just 35 for 37 on extra points, so he's not certainly uh, been a problem most of the year, but... In a game like this that you expect to be very yeah. close. And two points teams, are hard point to come that by. That one point, you hope it doesn't come back to bite you. Yes. Um, you know, and here's, so you are Aiden Holt, Dominic Thomas, uh, Josh Wood, Brett Gerke. You have now had a four and a half minute drive where you've been pushing up against a really strong offensive line. Now, now you've you got to go out there right and play offense. On offense yep. To play. Uh, you know, the, hopefully both teams are conditioned well. They're ready to go uh, for the start. There is a little bit of a crowd. I think maybe 250 people were allowed, including some senior and juniors who got special tickets. So the student section spread out, socially distant, but they've got a lot of enthusiasm. Kicking off is Schmidt. Two men deep at the 10 yard line. And the kick travels to about the, oh, it bounces and, oh, that was, that was, so what happened is you kick, the returner was waiting for it to go out of bounds and the Grain Valley person almost fell on it. So Belton's going to be pinned deep then, yep. I believe. And luckily next to us today, we do have a gentleman who's going to help us officiate the game. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, do not blame us if he says words that you'd prefer not to hear, by the way. Um, my guess is if the Grain Valley person touched it in bounds, it is not a penalty. So no. the ball starts on the 25-yard line, or on 20. the 20-yard line. So that's one of our best for the whole year for Grain Valley. So I suppose it's essentially start. treated as a touchback? No, no. Once you touch it in bounds, it can't be an out-of-bounds play. So right. we didn't get on it, but we hit it. So, okay, this play starts, and they try a run right up the middle. Belton does, the Pirates, and there is maybe a gain of one or two on the play before he's pushed back. That's the heart of that defense, and that's a tough road to hoe, isn't it? Yeah, and, I, and see, that's where I think – now, you would think right now they're still fresh enough – but you hope for the Eagles' sake when it gets later in the game that they're able to win more of these types of battles in the trenches because they should be fresher on defense than a lot of Belton's guys are on offense because they go both ways so much. That's a handoff to number 19. He picks up a solid gain, maybe six yards to bring up a third and two. That was Hunter Newsom on the tackle. It was a simple veer handoff to one of the wingbacks. Uh, it looked like it... And I was, I'm not sure who was on that carry. I'll try to get numbers. Now a handoff to the right. He's trying to get to the sticks, and he has stopped maybe a yard short. Uh, great play by uh, the aforementioned Knox, who you were talking about was a game-time so decision. So I guess he's playing tonight. And uh, Keegan Hart, the second-leading tackler coming from the defensive backfield. And they made it fourth down and one. And a big decision for Coach Vaughn. It looks like he's sending in the punt unit. It looked like he was destined to make a first down. And the, the cornerback and safety from that side came screaming up. That's big. If you're Green Valley's offense, you, well, now we'll It see is a we timeout. Do. I think the clock was running down. Belton I think out. Belton has a couple decisions to So make. now you wonder, I mean, you, you, you called the timeout. to if you, if you were dead set on punting, I just think something to keep an eye on here in the next minute. 
if you were dead set on punting and you were belting, not that you, you know, you're, you're not in, he's not going to kick it out of the end zone from here, but you wouldn't probably waste one of your timeouts to avoid a delay of game penalty if you were dead set on punting. So I wonder if they maybe didn't do, they have a something a little, if they don't have a something up their sleeve. Here. But if you have something up your sleeve, you can't do it after a timeout because Eagles are going to know that. I will bet you $3 that they punt it. Okay. Okay, everybody, you got that? If he doesn't pay me, I know my camera guy and my technician, they're going to take care of him. Do you have a Venmo? I do. Okay, because okay. I don't have cash on me. You're going to owe me $3, by the way. I think they're going to punt it here, but we'll see pretty quick. You win the bet if they either – if they go for it in any way or, or do fake a fake. Or the punt. Yep. yep. Or so. if the Eagles run into the punter, that counts too. Uh, they are lined up. They are lined up on offense. I'm going to owe you three dollars. Well, I told you. Why would they waste the time? And it was up there? the middle. He's not going to make it. Wow. That was Aiden Holt, their big back. He got nothing. Charge that is led huge. by Sawyer Ferris and uh, Donovan McBride. Well, so I won the bet, but I guess you were right that it was not a good idea because the Eagles were ready for it. The Eagles were ready. They lined up with their offense, gave no time, went right on the ball, and he didn't gain an inch. And that's a 225 that? running back, pound running back, but those are two 280-pound linemen that is, stopping him. That is enormous. And I think this, I don't want to go crazy here, but I'll be a little crazy. This could be a pivotal drive here. If yeah. the Eagles can punch this in, Yep, thrown that out. is a game oh. changer. That was thrown. It was thrown to Carter Day. The ball sailed a little bit. It wasn't a perfect pass. It was catchable, but it'll be second down and 10. This is very much a go for the jugular moment early. Yes. Now our field goal kicker, the sophomore Schmidt, has a pretty good leg. He doesn't yep. have a 46-yard leg, so they need to be moving it closer to even think about it. But I think they want a touchdown here. That could really... Granted, a field goal would be a two-possession game, but Correct. you can never have enough points. That's wide up the middle. Picks up three yards before Holt. Uh, brings him down, Aiden Holt, after a carry of three yards. That Holt's a great-looking defender. Brings up a third down and seven. And this is, once again, we talk about this all the time, don't we, Blake? Two-play territory. Yep. You, the play you're going for now isn't necessarily all or nothing for the first nope. down. Yeah. I think you very likely could see a run here. Third and seven, I, I, I see when they do this, when Keller wants to get those yards, he puts it as kind of a belly play. They pull the guard. He puts it into Wyatt's belly, pulls it out, and runs around yep. in. Let's see what happens. Nope, it's just a rollout to the right. Thrown over the middle. Oh, he had an open man in the middle. That was Carter Day again and overthrew him. That'll bring up a fourth down. And seven. The play was there. Uh, I think Keller saw him open, was a little excited, and overthrew it a little bit. There is a penalty on the play. That might be. I'd almost decline it, depending on what it is. Oh, and they must have been listening to me on the belt and sidelines because they did decline the penalty. I still don't know what that penalty was. But it's fourth and seven. But it is fourth and seven. Okay, Christian Kirk or Zach Kirk, excuse me, is in. Uh, Christian Kirk plays for uh, Arizona Cardinals. Had he would probably get the first down, too. If but they, if they there's the a good down. chance it's a screen pass. Kirk is their pass catching back. Yep. Let's see what happens here. Nope, he's just pass blocking. Throw. Down to the one. No, just out of the reach, and they'll turn it over on downs. What a great defensive stand yeah, by the Pirates. That's a huge defensive stand by Belton because now they've essentially gotten the ball back right where they were when they failed, and the Eagles unable to cash in there. And the Eagles are a little off on their passing to, yep. start, the, uh, to start the game. I think Keller's maybe completed one for five, maybe two for six. Uh, he completed we'll one on his first there. drive, right? And yep. I don't think he did any on that one. I thought he had one or two on the first drive. Maybe two on the first, yeah, maybe. I could be wrong. Doubtful, but I could be wrong. Okay, here we go. Gerke under center. Not under center, in the short shotgun. Pistol. He does drop back to pass. He's got one receiver out in the route, and right there to the receiver completed an eight-yard gain. Uh, you got good protection, and he doesn't throw it often, but he's decently efficient. Right. 
that pass was caught, I believe, by Devon or Devin Floyd, a senior from Belton. And that's a seven-yard gain, it turns out to be. And second down and three, good start to this drive. They're on about their own 35-yard line, and they really need to have something here. Yep. They averted disaster, but they're still going to have to show. And kind of a bobbled snap. Gerke has to keep it and gets one yard to bring up another third and one or third and two. As Yogi Berra would say, deja vu all over again. Deja vu all over again. We've had a couple linemen that have got a little jumpy sometimes, and McBride is not in the game as he's getting a little bit of rest now, so that middle may be a touch softer than it was. And you would assume if they went for it before, they're actually a little further down the field by a few I yards. I do not believe they'd go for it again, especially if they run it up the middle and don't get it. Right up the middle, and geez, it looks like a favorable spot, but he was pushed back. Uh, that was Dominic Thomas after a maybe minimal game, but they're saying first down. If he got it, he got it by the hair of his chinny chin chin, that's for sure. So Thomas went up, was pushed back after about a yard. It's first and ten. You will notice that uh, that you've got um, Bosserman is coming in there as a defensive back some. Uh, Jordan Jones, the junior, has also played some. I think uh, a couple times for, for uh, the injured Knox. The run that time by Holt, he picked up maybe a yard, maybe nothing on the play. Um, they are having some rough sledding running the ball. Yep. Uh, so no gain on the play, second down and 10. And we said it was a convocation of Eagles, is yes, that right? right? Yeah. Not a plethora, not a, a flock, but a convocation of Eagles. That was Gerke on the play, kind of stumbled ahead for about three yards, bring up a third down and a seven. What are we going to see out of them now? If you're well, it's an Belton. obvious passing situation. And, you know, if any, with what he showed on that first uh, pass play of this drive is any indication, he's more than capable of those intermediates. And let's see what kind of pressure on the quarterback they can get from McBride, Jones, uh, McCoy up front. And then you've got, they send Kirk in sometimes. Uh, on a blitz. Yeah. Yep. Number 20, Jake Allen's in the ball game too, sophomore. And that's thrown right over the middle for a first down. I believe that is uh, number six, Devin Floyd again. And it was a nice, efficient pass for a first down. Once again, it's interesting. So strength on strength is Belton's running game versus the run defense. And I think the Eagles have gotten the better end of that deal. But when it comes to passing, uh, Gerke is two for two with two very good passes, hitting uh, Devin Floyd right on the numbers. Yeah, um, one set him up with a second and short, and the other one just converted I sure hope down. Mr. Floyd's nickname is Pink after one of my favorite bands. Uh, there is Aiden Holt on the carry. Picks up two yards, and they are in Eagle territory. First or second and eight on the Eagles' 49-yard line. About two minutes to go in the quarter. When you have a lot of running, uh, yeah, you have some fast, fast quarters, fast and I want to get a full game's worth of stuff. That's an end round. And there's some room there. Couple great blocks. He's still going down the sidelines. Makes a few move and doesn't get tripped up. That's a 34 yard gain on the play. And it was a simple, the, the back took kind of an end round and we've said that it is the perimeter that there's always trouble. Uh, when it comes to the Eagles defending, they do a nice job in the middle. It's hard to run up the middle, but they're, you know, Chrisman kind of exploited that. And, and that was the exact play that they scored the touchdown on Raytown did in the last seconds to beat the Eagles on the 34 yard touchdown run with five yards to go. So now they're coming around the outside again. Uh, they do a better job on that gain of four on the play. I believe that was Holt on the carry. Nope, that was Thomas on the carry. Second down and about six, but exploiting, you know, that 
3-4 defense, you're counting on linebackers to set the edge. And right. They've got two pulling guards in Alfredo Lopez and Corey Birch who are top-notch. Those guys can move their feet. They're big, and they get around. Um, they get around, and those guys on a linebacker is kind of a mismatch. Yeah. And another hand around the end, but Jake Allen, he's a sophomore linebacker, has been mainly a special teams player, but really had a nice play there. So Jake Allen makes a tackle in the backfield, probably loss of a yard, and it is about third and seven on the 15. There is a, a man down on the play. We would like to thank one of our sponsors, this Grain Valley School District, thanks to Hoffman's locally owned Papa Murphy's for their sponsorship of our Grain Valley Activities Program. Visit any of their six locations, including Grain Valley Springs, Blue Springs South, and Blue Springs North for your family's take and bake dinners together. Papa Murphy's, love at 425 degrees, and I would love a pepperoni pizza now. So Papa Murphy's, if you hear me, I'm up in the booth, I need pizza. Uh, but we do thank our sponsors. Looks like they're working on his leg area, either a knee or an ankle. Hopefully it's just a cramp and he's right back in the ball game. Um, this has been an impressive drive by Belton, and he is up on his feet. He's able to walk off on his own. That looks like it is Dominic Thomas, and that's a guy they need offensively and defensively. Right. Uh, real important to see he's walking slowly with a little bit of a limp. But I'm hoping the young man's okay. He's a good ball player, uh, and the junior does a lot of work for them offensively and, and defensively. defensively. That's a big loss for them if the if he's unable to return on defense as well as offense. Most definitely it is. They're in that flex formation. It is, they've got two wing backs. They got a split end. They've got a full back. They fake a run, throw it out, and that is a pass that is complete. So he's three for three passing, but he picked up maybe one yard. He had to dive to the ground to get it, wasn't able to run. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. Eagles six, Belton zero, but they are on the 13 yard line and do have the ability um, to drive. Right. So let's let's talk about one of our other sponsors. This one won't be food related, so it won't put me in a kind of a harried state. The Grain Valley School District thanks Jared Moran with Edward Jones Investments at Grain Valley for their sponsorship of our Grain Valley Activities Program. Call Jared Moran or visit his office on Eagles Parkway just east of Grain Valley High School for your investment needs. Edward Jones, making sense of investing. Now I'm hungry for money. So no matter what I do, no matter who I advertise, these are such great sponsors. Well, you need money to buy I want to work with them. That's true. I could invest my money to buy pizzas. So thank you to Edward Jones also. Pretty even first quarter. Real turning point when Belton was able to stop them on After four downs was. deep in Belton territory and then were able to get the drive going. Yep. And here comes Cole Keller on defense right now. So let's see, it's fourth down. They're about the... Uh, oh, they're trying an extra... A field goal. They're trying a field goal, yeah. So it'll be a 30-yard field goal from the 13. That's number 13 on the kick. The kick is up. He splits the uprights. Oh, it is no good. It must have been off to the side. That was Trey Betancourt kicking. If I remember his name correctly, he is a player on their soccer team. Yep. Um, who I think just beat Grain Valley this week, but we don't need to talk about that right now. Um, so the score is 6-0. That means that the Eagles will take over on their own 20. First and 10. You know, as much success as Belton was having with their intermediate passing game on fourth down there, I'm surprised they didn't try to get set up a first and goal. Do you know what my dad always said? He said the worst, the most worthless play in high school is the field goal kick. He said there's not many people good at it. You're not going to get enough points. Most high school games are going to be decided. So he would never. He was angry if the coach called a field goal to be kicked. 
I agree in general, especially like even in like in, in, in NFL and such, when the kickers are obviously uh, excellent from you know generally you know fifty five even sixty yards and in. Um, to me, it's always. Unless it's just a, t I mean, if it's fourth and ten from the twenty-five, okay, you can count on your kicker to make that forty, forty-four yarder, and that's a tough fourth down. But I don't generally like them unless it's uh, unless the unless you know exactly in this context how valuable the points are. Yes. If you're down to one with five seconds to go and it's a makeable field goal, of course. So that's right? Keller but, keeping yeah. it, and he's off to the races. There is a defensive back. Corrals him out of bounds at about. The 26 yard line. So, if my math is right, as it always yep, is, you're yep, supposed yeah, to yeah, say, yeah, 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 yeah. that is a 54 yard run by Keller. I did the math in my head at the same time, and that's what I got. So, okay. either we're both, both right or equal. Well, you should have said it before I did, but that's about 70 yards so far for Keller. They're on the Belton 26 yard line, and Keller's right back at it. He's crossed Short the 900 shotgun. yard mark. Yep. Rushing. And that's a two-yard gain by Jackson Wyatt. Runs right up the middle and is forced back after a two, three-yard gain. I'm trying to see if I see number 26 on the field. Uh, Thomas. Yeah. Dominic Thomas. Let's see if my spotters know. Damon Braun, find that out. Look for number 26 linebacker he'd be. But he, I mean, he's an important piece to that puzzle. He kind of faked the end round there, Cole Keller did, and as always kind of used his combination of size and speed to bounce off a guy, and then he was off to the races. Fake pass, and then it's a throw up the middle. That was a quick slant to Parker Bosserman. That's going to be a 14-yard gain, and it'll be first and goal for the Eagles in just inside the 10. Just and that was a nice looking throw there. But once again, he used the run to set up the pass yep. and got that defense moving forward in the box. Uh, so now it's first and 10 you at the 10 the yard line. Get the uh, passing game clicking yep. again. He fakes it to Wyatt, does that belly play. He's going around in. He's brought down with Vigor at the three yard line. Vigor is not his teammate. It just means kind of a level of tackling. That was number 23, Josh Wood, a senior defensive back, um, taking him down like a bucking Bronco, kind of wrestling him down to the ground. And, oh, there is a penalty on the play. We've got holding on the offense. Yeah, and that's, that'll be a ten yard penalty. To those calls on those belly plays when there's a lot of running around the edges that, that really puts a lot of pressure on those tackles. Well, and, and it's can, outside there where they can see it, right? right. You can see that hook yep. being made yep. by. And we're not saying the tackle did it; we're just saying it's a possibility. So that offensive line has been doing a great job on the run, but now we've got a first down and goal from the twenty. So. Who knows what's going to happen here? I wouldn't be shocked though to still see a run on first down. No, I mean you got four plays back. to get twenty yards. So he fakes it, kind of a naked bootleg. He squares up. He hits Parker Stone, middle of the field, and he is brought down at the five yard line. That's the long snapper, Parker Stone. I believe he caught his first touchdown two weeks ago. Yeah. Or it might have been last week, but caught his first touchdown. That's a fifteen yard gain, and they got all those yards back plus some. Yep. So it is second and goal at the five yard line. Now anything's available, isn't it? Sure is. They've got uh, Hunter Newsom as the fullback, Wyatt as the tailback. They hand up up the middle to Wyatt and there looks to be a scrum at the two yard line. I imagine that Wyatt somewhere in that scrum should be about a three yard gain and it's third and goal on the two. One more of those, you're in the end zone. True, but it gets a lot tougher now, doesn't Look, it? Every yard marker gets tougher and tougher. Handoff up the middle to Hunter Newsome, the senior linebacker. Like I said. And that's a touchdown for Newsome. He's got four or five on the year. He was, he just, it was a simple dive right up the now middle. Now do we see that again, essentially, from the two or three yard line for a two point conversion to try to go up 14, or do they? Nope, they are going for the extra point. So that'll be Janes on the kick. Parker Stone, who made the big catch, will be snapping. Parker Bosserman, top receiver, is holding. Oh, and someone wasn't in the game. They're having to bring a guy in from the outside. They got 12 seconds. He gets himself set. 
Ball snapped, the kick is up, and I believe that one's good. Yes, and it goes through the uprights to make the score 13 to zero. Nine minutes remain in the second quarter. Belton, I think they've only had 13 scored against them once this year, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I think that's the only time they've had, uh, well, okay, so I'm looking at it. They had, Truman, they, they allowed gave up 14, 14 and then they allowed, uh, 12, 12 to Christman. Christman. So they've only allowed double digit points twice, and the Eagles are there in the first half. Anybody so, not living in Independence or Great Va Grain Valley that they played has not scored more than one touchdown. That would be accurate. Now, I, as I remember it, though, they're a good comeback team as they were down to Truman, so shocking. They were, yeah. They, uh, I believe they were down in the fourth quarter, weren't they? And then they kind of exploded. I think, I think it was just heading into the second half. Was it? But, okay. Uh, Belton's a good ball club, and I don't think it's going it to be late. too phased by this. Yeah, no. But that's why the Eagles... Uh, would love to Schmidt keep doing what they're off. doing uh, and holding on to the ball for such a yep. period of time. And he kicks it to about the 10-yard line. It's fielded. Up, oh, he's got a little space. He's brought down at the 29-yard line. I believe that was senior linebacker Jaden Jacobson on the stop. There is a flag that flew out of that pile. Another post-possession penalty, and if you remember our last home game here, there are quite a few of those. Let's yeah. see who maybe didn't use good judgment on how they treated other people. Let's see who it's on. The white hat comes out. Cheerleaders are doing their 13 push-ups. They hope they don't. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Defense. That's a 15-yard penalty on the Eagles. Uh, Coach Alley's not going to be happy about that, is he? No, and it seems like we see one of those a game, and you just hope they don't yeah. assert. It was on the 30-yard line. That gives them first and 10, their best starting field position on their own 44-yard yeah. line. Yeah. That can make a big difference. That's Aiden hold up the middle, and there is nothing there for him. Picks up a yard and then runs into that convocation of Eagles. The Pirates are not able to get up the field. So what Pirates would be like a legion or something, right? That would be the plural form, plural term for them. For like who? A, le a legion of Pirates. We're going to go with that because I'm not up to date on my Pirate group call. So we got second down and eight. They've had more success around end. They do go around end to the short side of the field. Pick up eight yards and a, and a uh, Pirate first down. You know, what do you do? Pirates really have an identity of establishing a run right up the middle with Holt. They are not being successful. Do you abandon that? What do you do right now if you're Coach Vaughn and offensive coordinator Sam Horrell? I think eventually you have to hope that if you're Belton at their size, because their 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 front, as good as the Eagles front has been, Belton's is bigger. So you got to hope that eventually that will pay dividends. But I said earlier, uh, the Eagles should be fresher most of the game because of how much Belton goes both ways. So that was a runaround end. Let's see. I can. I think I can get our tackler there. It was number two, Zach Kirk on the play. Sniffed it out was another of the same where they hand it off to the wing back or slot back, whatever you want to call it. It's more of a wing back in my H mind. H-back, maybe. Uh, no, he d not really an H-back, though. They're the facing inward. So uh, uh, second down and 11, they tried that same play, and that time the linebacker did have some outside resistance there and uh, got him for a loss Set of the a edge, yard. as they say. Yep, yeah. so it's on the Eagle 46-yard line, second down and 11. And someone's excited. Gerke goes back and passes it. It is picked off. Oh, and that was picked off by Hart, I believe. Keegan Hart. And if he had stayed on his feet, that would have been a touchdown. That's a sophomore, Keegan Hart. So the turf monster got him, huh? The turf monster got him. I mean, he saw six. Was in his got, eyes as happy. he started running. He, uh, but what a great play on the ball. It, receiver was open there, came from a safety position. You know, Keegan Hart, do you know why I love him? Because we both watch Cobra Kai, and whenever I ask him a question, he says, yes, sensei. That alone <laughs> makes me a fan of Keegan Hart. Eagles take over first and 10 near midfield. Hope we have a lot of Cobra Kai fans out there. 
and that's a, a run. That's to uh, Parker Bosserman, picks up nine yards. And you could tell uh, that Belton is, is getting a little worried about what to do at second down and one. They're scrambling a little, and their guys aren't able to make it off the field, you know. Yeah. Uh, their defenders and the guys who play two ways are getting a little bit run down. Second down and one. That goes up the middle. That's about a two-yard gain, but it's good enough first for down, a first yeah. down. And that was talked, Jackson Wyatt. He of always positive yardage. Yep, north and south. North, we south. We talked about this pregame about how, you know, we talked about what caused Eagles' struggles last week in Raytown, and you were talking about how it was the highest caliber opponent they had faced. And that's another way. We talked about how similar pure football-wise these teams are. But this is, you know, uh, a similar situation for Belton, the best team they've faced so far, and it, they're getting knocked back on their heels a bit as a result. S Spectrum Sports looks like they have no signal on their monitor, so you guys might need to tune, tune to in. us yep. for the for Even the though you can't hear us, tune too. in to us because you're watching them, so. That's a good point. Do you I, want me to knock on their window and tell them? I, <laughs> it is second down and nine. That was Keller on the keeper. It's just really funny to me whenever it's someone's like, well, hey, that station went out. You better tune in to us. Well, if they're still there, they're not going to hear you say that. It's it's like, uh, I don't know if you ever watched the movie Dinner for Schmucks, but there's a guy, uh, he's trying, they swap cell phones for some weird reason. You know how movies right. are. And he's trying to leave him voicemails, and then he remembers, oh, yeah. He's calling himself. Yeah, you can't. Well, and he said, and yeah. he's not going to hear my voicemails. He doesn't know my password. So he calls and leaves another voicemail saying what his password <laughs> is. Then he hangs up, and he screams, oh, but you can't get that one either. <laughs> well, oh, and it looks like Holt. You know, Holt's carried the ball eight times. He's made a lot of tackles, steps off sides. And they call offsides on the defense. Uh, that'll make it second down and four at the Belton 34-yard line. And the, the fans trying to do the famous you can't do that cheer. Um, not a very effective when you only have 20 socially <laughs> yeah. distanced kids doing it, but who am I to complain? Second down and four. And that's handoff right up the middle to Jackson White. And literally, you can see the defensive line moved back three yards automatically. You get a running head start. He got three yards on the play, and that'll bring up a third down and one for the Eagles. All On third down, they get right up to the line. I think they have predetermined plays called. Um, not letting the defense adjust. Keller whispers a secret to White, hopefully on where to go. And that's just Keller keeping it himself. Picks up about four yards and an eagle first down. He just went and he found himself a hole and he went right through there. First and 10 for the Eagles on the 28 yard line. You know, now they did get the passing game going a bit better on the last drive than it was two drives ago when they, you know, forced right. that turnover on downs. But you wonder if they finally um, decided just to keep running because I really don't think the Eagles have. Uh, well, in a all running year, play yet. and all year, they've passed off their running and right. not vice versa. And I think that's what you're seeing here. Oh, and the running back either went the wrong way or uh, no, 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 no. Keller went the wrong way. He went to hand off, and the running back was not there. And he kept it himself, got five yards, but we did see a penalty on the play. Maybe someone lined off offsides. We have an illegal shift, so two guys shifted. You can only shift one guy at a time. And so that'll be a five-yard penalty. It'll be first and 15. This is maybe an opportunity for Belton to change trajectory. So you can trajectory. work double shifts at McDonald's, but you can't work them on the football field. You cannot work them on the football field. And I want to mention that McDonald's at Oak Grove is one of our sponsors that helps sponsor this YouTube event. So I'm gonna, I'll what a say great that's opportunity why I to segue. It. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll take credit for I don't believe that's segue. true, though. I mean, okay, first of 15, there's only four minutes to go in the half. They hey, instead of three bucks, you should get in. me some McDonald's afterward. I can do that. I'll oh, geez. Fumble, and it went right back to Keller, but now he's scrambling around trying to, and he actually made it back to the line of scrimmage. But last couple plays have been sloppy. We've had a, 
illegal shift, and then there was kind of, I don't even know if it was supposed to be a handoff, but it was either a botched handoff, kind of a weird-looking Statue of Liberty-type play. For those of you older people like me out there who know what Statue of Liberty play is, where you kind of hold the ball up like the Statue of Liberty with the torch and then hand the ball off, so it's like a draw play with a with a extended... That sounds like it, it could here. go badly very easily. Well, it did go badly, and it is second down and 15 yards to go. Keller could have been tackled for a loss, but was able to dance his way uh, back to the line yeah, of scrimmage. Yeah, he's made something out of nothing for sure. Even And I team. think that's a timeout called right before the snap. Let me see. Yes, timeout by the Eagles. I think Coach Alley didn't like what he was seeing the last couple plays. You know, there's... There's three minutes to go in the half, and there's a good chance that Belton doesn't see the ball again in the right. first half. And, and you know, the the uh, the Eagles get the ball to start the third quarter as well. Yeah, no, they don't. They wait a minute. Lost the toss, but Belton deferred. You're right. My bad. So Belton will get the ball to start the half, but I don't think they want to get three touchdowns down to these no. Eagles, especially with the fact that. Their passing also comes off their running. Right. And it would be real hard to come back from 20 down. I, I really like to know in these first 24 minutes, assuming the Eagles hold the ball for close to the rest of the half, uh, what the time of possession is. I feel like Belton's probably had the ball for a combined like four or five minutes. It's been pretty incredible. Okay, now the Eagles, after a brief talk with Coach Alley. My guess is he probably told him something like settle down or just play football. Second down and 15. Once again, I don't think a run is off the table. No. Fakes the, the run, drops back to pass, looks off his first receiver, and throws it kind of to nowhere. Um, his first receiver was covered, and maybe wisely Keller just uh, threw the ball away. They don't need a turnover here. You've got a third down and 15 now. This is going to be a tough conversion, but this could be a backbreaker for the Pirates if the Eagles do convert here. Uh, and it's in that in-between space. You know, if it ends up fourth and 10 from the 28, you can't kick the field goal. You don't have a great chance to convert, but punting doesn't get you any yards at all. So we'll see what happens. But right now it's third down and 15. Once again, he's got Kirk in the backfield, who's kind of his third down back. He drops back, still looking. He throws it. Oh, did he catch it off the ground? No, incomplete. It, he kind of uh, skipped it like a rock in a creek to Bosserman, and that'll bring up a fourth down and 15. And I'm curious what they're going to do here. You might have enough room to punt and pin them deep if you... Well, that would be, yeah, I mean, in theory, but you're on the 32-yard line. You'd have to essentially punt it straight up in the air. It does look like that's what they're going to do is punt it. I don't know, though, with the snap and everything, I don't know how many yards you have to gain. Um, well, I can't tell what he's doing. Keller went back onto the field. Could he be He better hustle because there's only nine seconds left on the clock. They're going to have to call a timeout here unless they can snap it fast. Three, two, one. Oh, ah. drops it again on the snap. Does throw it deep to Bosserman, but it isn't getting there. Okay. And once again, timing was off as he, as he did drop the snap. See, I thought they might be about to take a delay a game. but Yep. And after that big drive, uh, it kind of peters out in the end. Uh, you know, that five-yard penalty can make such a difference in yep. there, can it? Especially when you're in that no-man's land between field goal slash, goal, you know, red yeah. zone and punting territory so now belton they're getting a score now and then having the yeah, ball now start the second half they really, have 249 the, it's, left it's coming on the defense to step up so because belton's gonna get back it to was a reverse yeah. there and it gets sniffed out and he picks up a yard on the play uh the back it was kind of a fake reverse and then a fake and then a double reverse guys crossing all over the place and the Eagles stayed home second down and eight. I'm trying to decide. It doesn't look like the pirates are in a big hurry. Um, maybe they don't want to give the ball back to the Eagles. Yeah, I think they're going for the back to back possessions thing. 
Well, and but the problem is there's 218 to go in the quarter and they don't look like they're in a hurry to get up to the line. We'll see what they do here. It might be if they get that first They do first still down, yeah, they do still have two, two timeouts, timeouts so. definitely. And that's run up the middle to Holt. He gets about 3 yards. And I think you're right too. It They've it, got third down here. If they're unable to convert, they want to try to kill the clock so the Eagles don't have time. And this is the same thing where either team, both of them are like, God, I'd like some time left on the clock, but neither will call timeout because yeah, they're, they're worried kind of about the other playing, team doing uh, it. What do you um, call it? They're chicken fighting a bit when not getting anywhere. Yes. So there's 20 seconds on the play clock. They could take it down to 120. It is third down and about seven yards, six, seven yards to go. They work their way up to the line. This will be an interesting play call. We'll see what happens here. It's handed off. And just right around the sticks, I think the mark is going to give them credit for the first down. It'll be first down on the 42-yard line. So there's 119 to go. And if I was a betting man, which, of course, I am, I would say... I, would, I was going to say, we, we, remember? I think I owe you $3, by the way. Um, but first and 10 on the 42, and I think they'll probably hurry up now. Yeah. Uh, 114 to go. Let's see what happens here. Drops back to pass. Throws it ooh, over the middle, but it was over the head of the receiver. Bosserman was playing defensive back over there, and if he hadn't fallen, I think he would have had a chance to... Um, chance to pick that one off. And that might, you know, what kind of, what does that have on a coach and an offensive coordinator when you see your guy kind of misfire and it could have been a pick? 13 to 0, they might be able to recover from. 20 to 0 would be a really tough road. Hand off to the outside. There's about a three yard gain before Keegan Hart gives him a big bear hug. Stops him for about a three yard gain. And his third down. I've noticed that the sophomore Hart, you know, in the in the previous games, he's made the tackles, but it's never been rushing up. And he's now running downhill as a tackler when he picked the pass off of really going after it now. Is that something you pick up as you kind of become comfortable in your starting position? Yeah, I think so, especially as a defensive back. You know, you've got to make sure your responsibilities in the secondary are taken care of before you come up to the line. Do you know where I get my steaks from? Uh, Valley Oaks Meats. How did you know? We would like to thank Valley Oaks Meats for their sponsorship of our Grain Valley Activities Program. Their locally raised beef can be purchased at their retail store at Lone Jack, online at valleyoaksteakcompany.com, or at their new location at the Old Winters Meat Market in Blue Springs. Taste the difference of locally raised beef from Valley Oaks Meats. And it looks like the picture's back on at Spectrum for those of you who want to be traders. Um, that another weaving. It was an end round, and he kind of picked his way back up the middle. That's another first down for Belton, but they have only 53 seconds left. I believe they have two timeouts remaining, and the clock is running, and they don't look in an awful hurry. Um, they are hurrying up to the line now, but they went to the sidelines to get the play. Gurky is back. I wouldn't be surprised to see him pass here. He drops back. Uh-oh, here it is. And the ball falls short. Good coverage over there by the junior, uh, number 26, uh, Jordan Jones, who's getting a lot of time at D-back this game. Nice play by Jordan Jones. It is now second down and 10, 35 seconds remaining. They're on the 46-yard line. There is a penalty on the play holding. My guess is the Eagles will accept it, um, which might kind of stop uh, the drive for Belton as it looks like it's a tougher road to hoe in completing that many passes. We'll see what happens. I would expect another uh, wing back end round, but once again, I don't know everything, so we'll see what happens here. And it was right up the middle to the running back, and he's got some room. I think that's Dominic Thomas back in the game, and he picked up a good uh, 16, 17 yards on the play. It's at the Eagle 41. He got out of bounds, and now you have a second down and about six. And this kind of puts everything back in yep. play. There's not a lot of time left. Still but two it is timeouts some, left, so they, still can, two they can call left. any play they want. Yeah. Uh, they can put it in the middle of the field. Yep. 
Uh, that was a great run. Started out just, they faked it in round and just handed it to the dive back up the middle. It wasn't Aiden Holt that time. I believe it was Dominic And that's Dominic a good Thomas. job by the running back to get out of bounds. That's a lot of, that's some awareness. Yep, there it definitely is. Gerke uh, rolls out, pass falls incomplete harmlessly. After completing his first two or three passes, he's really struggled yeah. uh, making completion since then. Um, it is now third down and six. Once again, I think they'll put the ball in the air, look to get it in the middle of the field, and then call a timeout if they have to. 19.8 seconds remaining. Gerke hands it off that same play up the middle where they fake the end round, and it's very successful. 11-yard uh, gain. They've kind of found something now. Uh, this play where they're they're faking going with the veer to the outside back and just handing it right up the middle uh, to one of their quicker backs. And uh, that was another first down. As you said, they were going to call a timeout. 13 seconds remaining. They're on the 30-yard line. I don't think they have a 47-yard kick leg but they're getting near field goal territory. How many guys, how many people do we have? I'm not very good today. Darn Spectrum Sports. Okay, so here we go. We're happy with the 304 fans that are joining us at the moment. A shout out to my brother if he's uh, listening. He said he was listening in Minneapolis. Minnesota's just starting their football season now and they'll have no high school playoffs. So really sad for them. Okay, Gerke, first to 10, 30 yard line, hands up off the middle again and that's a workhorse there and it's a four yard gain on the play and they'll have to call timeout again. They kind of went to the well one more time. Oh wait, they did call timeout. My guess is they're gonna set the clock up higher. It was about at maybe Nine, nine or eight seconds. Yeah, yeah, we'll nine. see what they reset it to. There should be some time put back on there. They nope. They're setting up for the field goal. So by my count, maybe they be did. A, yeah, maybe they deliberately yep. let it run down. Yeah. This last. So play it's a forty-three yard field goal. That's a long kick. That is a long high school kick, and it looks to be uh, Betancourt. They're yelling, watch he the fake here from the sidelines, but I think he will try it. He had a pretty good closer. distance. 43-yard kick is up. It looks like it's going to fall just short. About made it to three yards in the end zone, and that'll end the first half with the score. The Green Valley Eagles 13 and Belton 0, Belton Pirates 0. So we're going to take a little break right now. And when we get back, we're going to go over some area scores and, and kind of look at the first half. So everybody stay tuned, get a few snacks, maybe some popcorn, maybe some Papa Murphy's Pizza, along with some Oak Grove McDonald's, and finish it off with some Valley Oaks meat on the grill. That's called a fun Friday night. We'll see you soon. If you enjoy watching our broadcasts and would like to support what we love, here are some advertising opportunities. Our first option offers a 30 to 60 second promotional video which will be shown on GVTV's broadcast and during halftime at sporting events. If you'd like something short and sweet, then perhaps our 20 to 30 second promotional announcements at sporting events is right for you. We also offer logo placements within our broadcasts. You can choose between partial and constant placement which will appear on screen at all times or partial appearances during specific times. GBTV also offers shoutouts to our supporters on all social media platforms like Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Having our time deciding? Why not get the complete package with our bundle deal for a lump sum fee? If you'd like to support what we do, email Ms. McElwain at mmcelwain at gbr5.net.
Korean Valley Eagle Royal Talon. As a reminder, please continue to observe social distancing six feet from others during halftime and correctly wearing your mask over both your nose and mouth. The Grain Valley Unified School District and Grain Valley High School thank you for your continued support of our community school activities as well as hashtag MaskUpGV. Halftime from Grain Valley High School continues. We would like to thank our Eagle Media production sponsors for the 2020 school year. Oak Grove McDonald's, I'm loving it. Grain Valley Muffler, family owned since 1983. Eagle Fitness, fitness is not a destination, it is a way of life. Open 24 hours. We would like to thank you, for without your support, this broadcast wouldn't be possible. like I said last every single day because you know at, at the end of the day you don't know when your last practice is going to be because of you know the whole COVID thing. Prepare pretty well uh, knowing your plays as a defense knowing their stunts and blitzes as an offense. Um, for the game tomorrow night we are preparing watching film making sure practices are good. Um, now it's just we put all the work in now it's just getting ready to play. Just focusing
If you enjoy watching our broadcasts and would like to support what we love, here are some advertising opportunities. Our first option offers a 30 to 60 second promotional video, which will be shown on GBTV's broadcast and during halftime at sporting events. If you'd like something short and sweet, then perhaps our 20 to 30 second promotional announcements at sporting events is right for you. We also offer logo placements within our broadcasts. You can choose between partial and constant placement, which will appear on screen at all times or partial appearances during specific times. GBTV also offers shout outs to our supporters on all social media platforms like Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Having our time deciding? Why not get the complete package with our bundle deal for a lump sum fee? If you'd like to support what we do, email Ms. McElwain at mmacklewain at gbr5.net. We would like to thank our Eagle Media production sponsors for the 2020 school year. Oak Grove McDonald's, I'm loving it. Grain Valley Muffler, family owned since 1983. Eagle Fitness, fitness is not a destination, it is a way of life. Open 24 hours. We would like to thank you, for without your support, this broadcast wouldn't be possible. We are back here at Moody Murray Stadium in Grain Valley, Missouri for essentially a conference title game and first seed in the district. Uh, the all-important first seed where uh, would set up a semifinal matchup versus the number four seed, which is looking to be anyone from Chrisman to um, some other teams that have been beaten rather handily by the three teams above. And uh, the number two seed which would be Belton if they lost, and uh, it would be Grain Valley would be the three seed, Raytown would be the two seed. So they'd be set up, one of these teams is going to have to play Raytown in the semifinals, which is a very dangerous team. The other team uh, will have a much easier road to get to the championship game. Right now the Eagles are in the driver's seat. What does Belton have to do at the start of the second half to get this back going their way? Well, they've I think they've got to get back on track in their passing game because that's what really worked from well in their first drive. And then they've got to finish drives. You know, they, they've, they've had not as much success as the Eagles have, but they've been able to move the ball, especially on certain running plays. You know, they've, called, they've had a couple that have worked for them whenever they've called them. Uh, but they've been, they've been stopped short and forced to settle for mid-long range, especially high school kick uh, field goals. And uh, so I think... I mean, you know they're going to have to get in the end zone a couple times with the Eagles already having a 13-point lead. And I think in just in any game like this, uh, when you're dealing with two offenses that are used to holding double-digit leads over teams, it, it's finishing drives, I think, is probably what they emphasize the most in halftime. Yes, uh, we do want to give a shout-out watching in Myrtle Beach, Calif or Myrtle Beach, South Carolina right now is uh, Chad Benchoff. He's been one of our... Uh, coaches for our wrestling program for years. He's out at the Super 32, which is a great high school wrestling event. Um, and he's out there listening to the game all the way out from Myrtle Beach. Feel free to send us in. How far away are you uh, watching the game and listening to us on so we can see what kind of impact we can have out there. There is three minutes to go in halftime. I'm trying to get other scores for you, but my um, app is not doing very well. Let's take a look again. Four scores. Yep, it's not. And seven years ago. I knew you were going to do an Abraham Lincoln joke. It's every single broadcast. You're obsessed with Abraham Lincoln, who apparently is the uh, second best president. Uh, oh, don't. But don't no, we're not going stop. there. Are we? We're not going there. We're not even going to start. Yes, we can't. We can't head in a good direction there. Um, let's take a look at some of our sponsors. I can get in less trouble that way, can I? <clears throat> 
we've got a couple of our other sponsors as we get ready for the second half. You know, another place I love eating at. So we could go for dessert here. Grain Valley School District thanks Sonic Drive-In mm -hmm. of Grain Valley for their sponsorship the of the Grain Valley Activities blast. Program. Mm. Yep. Stop by Sonic on Main Street just south of I-70 for made-to-order American Classics, signature limeades, and speedy service from friendly car hops. Cruise on over to Sonic. By the way, they need to bring back the Reese's Overload Blast. I was heartbroken when that went away. Is there anyone out there who can get that done? Make that happen, please. The Reese's Overload Blast. Blast. Okay, so that's what my partner Blake Terrence here is calling for. I knew it was only going to be temporary because it was on the temporary menu, but they've had maybe one or two things in the past that they made permanent because they were so popular. And I think I ate enough of those things to do <laughs> that on my own. Well, that was so. nice of you, I guess. I mean... Um, we're going to try to go in another way to see what we've got going on. Uh, we would like to also thank one of our other uh, anchor sponsors, Jack, Jake's Industrial, for their sponsorship of our Grain Valley Activities Program. Call Jake's Industrial for commercial or residential heating and cooling needs. The problem with being in Missouri is you could have a heating need one day and a cooling need yep. the very next yep. day. So you bring them out there, they check your heating system, and all of a sudden you have to turn your air conditioner back on. Yep. Um, I heard there's possibly snow next week. I don't want to jinx anybody. I just got a bad look from students. Uh, uh, but I think there is a chance of that. And unfortunately for the students, we're not having traditional snow days. The first six of them will be virtual learning from home where they'll tune in and get some live teaching from the teachers, which you guys can look forward to teaching in their pajamas. So if that's not going to be a great way to go, I don't know what is. Belt's coming onto the field now. I always like how halftime's 15 minutes, and then they add three minutes for an additional warm-up. Novel concept here, 18-minute halftime. And not adding time to the clock is that like just come a good out idea? with three minutes left on the. Yes, yeah. it it would seem to work. Uh, you know, Belton, Belton is. It's I like stoppage time in soccer, yeah. right? It's that that's the concept. I think they completed their first three passes, uh, of the game, and then I don't know if they completed a pass after that and did have an interception. Uh, at the end of the half, they got their first glimpse of successful offense through this kind of fake the reverse and then hand it up the middle to yeah. one of their speedier yep. back to pick holes rather than just lining up in a straight dive, which was not very effective for them at the start. So we'll see what they pull out to begin the second half. Uh, they could really use a big play here and to score because Grain Valley does have the ability to hold on to the ball quite a while. Right, and that's really what they do. I mean, again, I, I don't know if we get that detail to stats, but I really – what would you guess the time of possession disparity was? If uh, I we, had to guess – Belton got the ball back with uh, like right around two and a half minutes to go on for that final yep. drive. So they probably had the ball for a total of, what, five, six minutes? I think it's a touch bit longer than that. I would say it is 15 minutes to nine okay. minutes time of possession. Maybe, yeah. We're – Whatever number we give out is what's the case is because no one's going to be able to verify it, right? Just no. like with anything Except else. Except quarterback. The Casey Star guys behind us, he might know time of possession better than us. He, he says, says Preps yep. KC is down, so he doesn't know either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you guys are noticing Preps KC is down. So we know no other scores. We're just playing in the here and now. Grand Valley is the only football game going on right now. It is possible that all other games stop to yep. watch this matchup yeah. between the two titans of Belton and Grain Valley. And uh, Lee Summit West especially, right? They're the titans, aren't they? Yeah, I shouldn't have mentioned titans, huh? Lee Summit West and uh, I don't know who else. Who else are the titans around here? Any others? Well, Tennessee in the NFL. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I was hoping for something a little closer to home. Okay, I did get to Preps KC, but now let's try live scoring. Yep. Liberty, okay, so here's some scores. At the half, Liberty North is leading Blue Springs South 13-3. to Are they still winless, by the way, South? Uh, they just might be. They just might be. Um, they might have one win. I thought they had one win under their belt. Maybe but they do. But I will check that later. 
Center is up on Clinton at the half, 21-0. Uh, Fort Osage in the second quarter up on William Christman, 27-25 in a barn burner. 27-25 still in the second quarter. I thought Odessa Harrisonville would be a good game. Harrisonville has that running back Reynolds who's rushed right. over 2,000 yards, but Odessa's up 49 to eight at the half. Uh, I, I, they might have to abandon the run right now. I guess. Um, St. Michael up on Lathrop, 20 to 13. Staley over Lee Summit at the half, 21 to seven. You know, Staley, has been a traditional power. Started the year off rough, and I was really worried about him. Uh, at the half, Lee Summit West is leading Lee Summit North 7-0. to zero. I missed my daughter's dance performance today, and then they have their, like, end-of-the-year banquet after the game, so I apologize to my daughter, Sasha. She's a beautiful dancer. I wish I could be two places at once, but I hope Lee Summit North brings back a win for her so her team wins. Liberty's up on North Kansas City. I think that's a good game at the half, 17-7. Um, and the kickoff by the Eagles to about the seven-yard line. Good kick for the Eagles. And it is returned. Oh, there's a gap there. And someone's hanging on barely. But that's a great return of about 38 yards and great field position for Belton to start just what the doctor ordered. Uh, Grandview is up on Oak Park, 22-13. Park Hill is leading Raymore Peculiar at the half, 13-0. Wow. That's kind of a big That's a shocker. Uh, Park Hill has been always a good team, but hasn't gotten over. Platte County, another contender for the Class 5 title, is beating Lansing, who's a good team on the Kansas side, 7-0. Celsius Springs over Pleasant Hill, 7-0. Raytown over Truman at the half, 21-12, keeping their winning ways. Rockhurst over your alma mater, Blue Springs, 28-13. Uh, Ruskins leading Raytown South, 21-16. And we've got a run, and that looks like a gain of about four yards on the play. Brought down by number 49, Josh McCoy. And 26, that was Jordan Jones. And uh, to finish up the game, St. Pius X is leading. Uh, Pembroke Hills leading Van Horn, 24-0. And Smithville is up on Winnetonka at the half, who started the year undefeated but has hit a rough patch. Smithville's up 20-0. That was another run kind of up the gut, and that was number two, Kirk, and number 49, McCoy, again on the stop to make it third down and five. Nice stop on that play. This is a huge third down for early in the third quarter, isn't it, for Belton? Yeah. They had good field position. They're on the 46. Need to take advantage of it. It is third and six. This is probably another one of our two down territories. They hand off around end. And the Eagles led by Donovan McBride. That's another tackle for loss. He's got a good number of those on the year, doesn't he? So McBride stopped him at first, and then he was joined by Terry, I believe, Newsome, maybe Quincy Jones on that. It is a fourth down and seven, and that might be a touch out of range on their own 45. So they are back to punt, but they've got an odd formation that they're not matched up on. They're going to have to call timeout probably no so the eagles are all spread out you've got donovan mcbride out on the wing out there and we'll see what they do it is a punt but the eagles weren't ready for it it is punt very high doesn't go very far though that is a 17 yard punt down by belton and it'll be first and 10 for the eagles at the eagles own 38 yard line that's not the start that belton wanted is no and really kind of a pop fly on that punt there. They didn't really manage to pin the Eagles deep. That's pretty decent starting field position, actually. That's only about a, what, about a 20-yard punt, if that? Yep, and I think we're going to get a steady dose of Jackson Wyatt on traps up the middle and Cole Keller around end. What do you think? It Wyatt it really was really the guy who I think was getting the most consistent reps, but Keller, of course, the home run threat on the ground, so we'll see. And that is Wyatt on the first carry. Sheds a tackler, keeps his body moving forward. Picks up another, you know, work pale three yards on the carry. Three yards in a cloud of dust. That felt like the Big Ten, which is starting this Saturday. Okay, second down, seven yards to go. 
I think we could see Wyatt for quite a while on this drive. He doesn't seem to tire out. Yep. And that's a quick pass out to Bosserman. He picks up about eight yards. It was thrown right at the line of scrimmage. Uh, quick pass over there, and it was basically a 10-yard width handoff into a completion. Uh, essentially a running play, but you're just tossing it a out there. Handoff, yeah. So uh, first down and 10 on their own 49-yard line, and the Eagles are driving again. And that's Keller keeping it after the belly play. He picks up about six yards on the play. They are in Belton territory, second down and four, and you can hear that clock ticking away. And that really is the difference, I think, and why the Eagles have dominated the time of possession is because they've been able to move the ball on the ground. The Pirates really haven't. Correct. And uh, barking out some signals, taking their time. They shouldn't snap it too early at any point. Uh, that's Wyatt on the carry, and once again, not much of a hole there, but he squirted through, kept his feet moving, and picked up another Eagle first down. First and 10 on the 40-yard line, and they line up again, which gives them, which gives Keller a lot of time on the line to kind of call out the play that's going to happen. Survey the defense. Yep, yeah. survey the defense, see what happens. Uh, offensive line doing great work today. We'll try to get them a shout-out pretty soon. I know the left side is the two seniors, all conference players, Hinton and Bailey. That was uh, Bosserman, and as he tried to uh, cut, he kind of slipped, and it's second down and 10. Uh, you got McBride at center, and then on the right side, it looks like you've got Cooper Terry, and let's see if I can see our other one. There is an official timeout on the play. I'm not sure what for. No injury, is there? No. Maybe with the clock in the press box. I'm not sure. I know Here's they had your a few problems. Here's your, your weekly moment to make fun of. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna make any word on that. But somehow they are going to wind the clock again. I think it was something with the yardage markers. So I assume that's all metaphorical, right? They don't still wind clocks in football, right? That's that's okay. All. I would agree with you there. That was uh, they kind of altered Keller, kind of altered the cadence on his snap, and the nose guard jumped off sides. That goes from a second and ten to an ill afford. They can't afford to have second down and fives with the Eagles' right. running game. Right, um, makes it easy. I still do have a clock that wind, you wind it with the key, like one of those old uh, bell clocks. Uh, not a grandfather clock, it's a wall clock, but I, got I don't you. know if you have one of those. but Not personally. And that play was stopped in the backfield. They are sending the whole kitchen sink in right now. Second down and seven. A play action pass over the middle will be an easy, nobody around them touchdown. I wouldn't be surprised to see that dialed up right now. So it's third down and seven on the 37 yard line. Once again, in kind of that funky no man's land, it's hard yes, to it punt is. from here. So you really need to convert. And that was Keller keeping it himself. He picks up something out of nothing, but just a three yard gain. That's fourth and three now on the 34. Is a fourth down. And once again, you get a penalty. Uh, Belton is clapping, which makes me think that it is on the Eagles. Definitely a dead ball. Probably a uh, wow, dead ball, personal foul offense. And that is the second one they've gotten. It'll be 15 yards marched off. Well, I believe it was post after the play, so it's probably fourth down. Fourth down and 19 to yeah, go. Well, so, you've got room to punt now, but that's not really a Well, and they positive. won't punt. I don't think it's um I think it's third it down. is Okay, so it was on the it was during the play. I guess it was during the play, but it seemed like it was after. The flag looked late. Yep, so it is third down and 19. I wouldn't be surprised again, although it's not going to be as much there as that little pass over the middle where you just have a release of either the Not a end whole or the lot fullback. of stuff in the playbook for this spot. There isn't. They might just be conservative here, but they are rushing. They've got seven guys on the line. I don't know if all of them are rushing. The linebackers drop back. Keller goes back, 
throws it, and he kind of just threw it up for grabs. That falls incomplete. Summerlin, the senior, was the closest receiver, and that brings up a fourth down. Well, Bosserman, a capable punter. This is a spot where... Is this his first punt of the game? I believe so. Yeah, first punt for the Eagles today. This is a DeMond spot where you trying can, to think, but I he think could he quite easily pin him inside the 20 here if he can... Yeah, he should be able to. Remember, he kind of has that rugby style of you run a couple feet to the right. Sometimes people put a lot of guys over there and attempt to block it, and they've got, they are set up to try to block that. He does get it off and kicks it low, and that's going to end nicely. It might go, oh, it just went out of bounds at the one-yard line. Wow. It rolled right on the ground, coffin corner. That is deadly. That is a 50-yard punt, no return. One yard line, and I believe there is another flag on the play. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct. Unsportsmanlike conduct, defense, maybe. I don't know. They're not. It is defense. So that was kind of a free penalty because you can only penalize them seven inches. Yeah. So. But that seven-inch dead ball penalty will happen. Any mistake here is at least a safety, if not a – and, I mean, if yeah, there's any – He literally – I got to tell you this. The ref literally picked up the ball and, like, nudged it back. Yeah. Any okay. mistake here now, by the Belton offense is the Eagles are calling for, for a safety, and I don't know if our fans understand those rules. You don't get a safety for a penalty. Now, they would if there's a penalty on the goal. offense in the end zone here. Yes, but, but that wasn't yeah. in the end zone. It was a dead no, ball. Yeah, dead ball post Quit play. putting your hands together in the pancake. We'll just play ball. And he runs right up the middle, maybe picks up that seven inches that the penalty was, and it'll be second down and ten. We're the still Eagles on the one-yard line. more than happy – uh, with that was three a and out play. here. That would yeah. be a terrible place for their punter, especially since we, the two punts we've seen have not been all that impressive. The Eagles could get I know insane that Belton, field position. Yeah, Belton has found something when the Eagles pass of just blitzing, not giving Keller time to sit back there and survey the field. That was another run right up the middle of dive, maybe a gain of another three inches, and it's second down. Third down. Third down. Nine yards and seven inches. And they're literally just trying to avoid a safety. That's all they can do here. Yeah, well, I, you know, I try to go around in because if you can suck a few guys up, maybe you can make a big play. More vulnerable to a safety there, but like you said, could also spring a big run. Yes. And so we'll is, see what there's they no do way here. to get off a punt here from this spot. No, you don't have a lot of room. He drops back for a little pass. Uh, kind of throws it away. They're wanting a grounding, but in high school, I don't think you get a grounding pair with that. He just kind of faked the handoff and did a quick dump, well, so there is no chance. Well, good luck punting from this Yes, it's spot. fourth and ten, and you only get about nine yards on the long snap, where you usually get about 13 or 14. So, number one, you risk a block there. But I don't know. I the, You know, the punter only but if, punted if it his, 20, Yeah, I mean, if, if his punting so far is any indication, the Eagles are going to get the ball – at the 25, 30 yard line. Yep, uh, our uh, punt returner, Keegan Hart of the interception and Parker Bosserman are on the 30 yard line to receive the punt, the Belton 30 yard line. We'll see what happens here, a lot of pressure. They might wanna call timeout here and talk about it. Wait, delay a game on the offense. <laughs> My goodness. That is interesting. Um, now, granted, it doesn't move them very far, but it, it now the punter is going to be standing on the back line penalty. of the end. Now, stick with me here. So these are a couple of their new penalties. They might have a total of four penalties for less than a yard. <laughs> I don't think that's ever happened either. No, I don't think it has. Oh, he steps out of the back of the end that's, that's zone. safety. Takes the safety. Yep. Might have been a good play. You know, it was 13-0, to zero, so that keeps it a two-possession two game. game. You're right. And at least you have a chance to get it back. That isn't now, necessarily a tough And, and now also, ball. not only that, but as a two-possession game now, now if the Eagles kick even a kick a field goal, that makes it a three-possession game at 18. But if you do a little uh, – if we get a little math nerdy here, the Eagles can also not make this a, a four-possession game even with eight because that you would have to cross yeah, over 24. Yes. You'd have to get to so, 25. So. so I would say that little was damage a smart control. play. Yeah, it's a little damage control They were going to give up the ball anyway, yep. so it wasn't anything like that. Uh, nice job there. 
So now it'll be interesting to see. So you get a free kick. It'll be interesting to see if they punt it or kick it. Here. I think they're going to kick it. Their off kicker the seems to have more distance. Yeah. He'll kick it off the tee. Now it'll set up for a better return. At the 20, right? Yep. 20 yep. yard line. And once again, we've got Hart and Keller deep. And I'm just trying to, I just don't trust what's going on. And look at this too. Uh, Hart and Keller switch sides. They're trying to get the ball to Keller for whatever reason, but we'll see what happens here. I'm predicting a pass across the field to Hart if they kick it to the right. And they kick an onside kick. It's great job by the Eagles. You know, sometimes you sit back and wait for it to bounce again. Parker Bosserman, the jack of all trades that he is, comes screaming up on the kick and before it can bounce again. Okay, so grabs I it out understand of the aggressiveness and you're down two possessions and you need all the possessions you can get. But if you were going to attempt an onside kick there and give the ball to the Eagles in, on, you know, very much their plus territory, you know, why, why take the safety in but the first place? But if they kicked it as is on the 20-yard line, we'd get it on the 45 right. so, yeah. or 50. Yeah, Maybe High they could get the ball back. You it's know. only a difference of 15 yards at most or so. Yeah, you're exactly. right. Exactly. Yep. So, uh, but they have it now on the, the Pirates' 35-yard line, and Keller's back, hands it up the middle to Hunter Newsome, and uh, he gets – oh, he's still going. Uh, there were six guys on him. It looked like guys trying to take him down on the wrestling mat, which is hard to do. Hunter Newsome, a state place winner two years in a row in wrestling, but he's running the ball at second down and eight. I think Jackson Wyatt's all right. They're just giving him a little rest. He's carried the ball quite a bit. We got a second down and eight yards to go. And that's Keller keeping it, fake the end round, and there was nowhere to go there. Great job by the Belton defense. And, and to be little, fair, uh, the Belton defense has held the Eagles in this kind of area of the field a couple times tonight. Yes, they have. Yes, they have. The Eagles offense has not been dominant. Sharp, yeah. uh, they've done best when they've driven it the whole way down right. the field. Yeah. Good field position Weird. hasn't, which would once again say that wasn't a bad play by them. True. Maybe in the 35 it turns off our super spidey senses and we're not able to drive the ball as well. Yeah. Um, so Belton, great play there, brings up a third down and 10 now. Well, you almost wonder if that is their thinking. I mean, it's it, it, yep. it's the only thing that makes it make sense. Yep. And it's a pass. Oh, just out of the reach. Bosserman was striding down the middle of the field. It was right there. You know, Keller's about a yard off on his, his passes right now. And I know that his shoulder's been a little sore, uh, got bruised up a little, but hasn't been um, as efficient as his 70% completion rate now it's, you know, around 60% has been this year. Um, done a much better Hence job running the ball. That's why you need the buy, right? That's right. why it's so so important. The Belton defense, though, has done Yeeman's work this oh, whole yeah. second half, and really most of the game is fourth down and 10. You've got three wide receivers to the right, one to the left, and that's Cole Keller just took it right up the middle. I guess he just decided we're not going to worry about it. That is a 19-yard gain, and that was huge. Fourth and 10, 35-yard line. Yeah, and the, uh, the Eagles' offensive line, we're talking about how much bigger the Belton fronts are. Uh, they they yep. had none of that. That was, a, that was a quarterback draw completely. It was a call play. That wasn't him on his own. That was, oh, yeah. you're going to take the ball in your hands, and you're the biggest, strongest guy on the field. You're going to run for a first down, which he did. So there is an official timeout on the field. 3.27 to go in that third quarter, and the third quarter is coming out pretty quickly. They're resetting the uh, clock, but I think Keller's shoe came off. There they go. They were trying to reset the clock to 25 seconds, so you couldn't do that to stall and make it reset to 40 every time and then have to tie your shoe. Keller, he's slower at tying his shoe than about anything else on the football field. Usually a fast guy. His two shoe tying is not stellar. Um, we've got a first down and 10. Well, he had to untie and retie it probably, That's right? That's true. Yeah. 15 yard line, first and 10 of Belton and Belton is going to do everything they can to keep him out of the end zone here. That's Keller keeping it again up the middle. That's a great backside tackle. I got to see who that was. 
Oh, that was Aiden Hold, of course. Uh, Keller was just getting into his full six foot five stride, running like a deer, and from the backside, Holt did a great job of tracking him down. So second down, five yards to go. This could very much be the nail in the coffin drive if the Eagles yes. can punch it in. Once again, Keller right up the middle, bowls over the safety. Gets a first down to the two-yard line, and this is nothing fancy. It's the lineman. So you've got on the right side of the line right now, uh, Easton Knight, Cooper, Terry. He's running right beside them. Those are two really big juniors, 250, 60-pound kids, and Keller's just going right off their butts and going up the middle. He's gained 25, 30 yards in the last couple plays. They're on the two first down. That looked like another penalty. Looked like timing was off and there was a legal motion, a legal procedure, whatever they want to call it. False start against the Eagles. So it's now first down on the seven yard line. 220 to go in the half. And I think, I think a touchdown here would make it very difficult for Belton's style of offense to be okay. And like you said, this might be a time if they didn't score, they would think of a field goal here to make it a three-possession game. But right, right now, yep. I think they're thinking touchdown. And look at this. You've got Parker Bosserman. He started at quarterback last year some, and he takes a snap as a Wildcat quarterback. And he gets down to the five, the four-yard line there. And I'm trying to see what happens. They might have called it a fumble. I can't tell. They did call it a fumble, and Belton takes the ball, and they'll be first and 10 on the 12-yard line. Um, there was a big group of tacklers on him. The ball was, was ripped out, recovered. They're lucky, the Eagles are, that they didn't do that on their feet because um, if he had scooped it up, there was no one there to stop him from scoring. But instead, the Belton player uh, jumped on it. It's first and 10 for them at their own 18. And boy, does that breathe life into That's a team big. that was in big trouble there. And Keller was split out wide on that play. They probably want to put stuff on film to make people think. But it ended up being a turnover. That's a run up the middle. And once again, no yards on the play up the middle they have not been able to do anything unless it's a delayed handoff or some kind of trap play uh power on power the eagle defensive line um you've got quincy jones you've got donovan mcbride ethan schaff in there now you've got mccoy they are uh sawyer ferris is another one they are stout against that offensive front and they are not allowing an inch up there They run up the middle again, and can you guess what? No gain on the play. That was Jane Jacobson, the linebacker, senior linebacker on the stop there. Um, that was Thomas on the carry, so Thomas is healthy enough to run the ball and did a good job at the end of the first half, but running's been fewer and farther between. And uh, Belton kids have a third down and 10 yards to go, and uh, this is going to be real tough for them here. Gerke needs to find something. He hands it off around end. And even the Eagles have stopped that. That was a two yard gain that play. I think that was 21 Michelson on the tackle. Fourth down, eight yards to go and they're gonna have to punt. It's really just uh, kind of back Except and forth right now with not a whole punt lot of- punt is their quarterback. Brain Gerke. Keep an eye out for some trickery. He's on the 18-yard line. It is their, uh, it is their punter, and that is the end of the quarter. So fourth down, eight yards to go. 15 to zero is the score. Now can we focus Mr. DeMond Brown on the cheer squad here? Uh, they're doing their between third and fourth quarter cheer. We are talking about a state champion numerous year team on the cheerleading squad. It is a large squad and it is the best in Missouri. 
Um, and I think they'll prove that at state this year. We're really proud of our, our cheer squad. Led by Delan Carlson, who retired, so she was put in the Hall of Fame and then came out of retirement. So she's a Hall of Famer still currently in action as coach of the cheer squad. And here we go, Belton, fourth down and eight. Let's see if there is any trickery to be had. And they've got that odd formation out there. He does punt it. That's a nice looking punt there. Punts it back to the 35. There is a flag on the play. It's going to be unnecessary roughness on Belton. He put him in the bear hug like your Aunt Jenny puts you in a bear hug when she sees you at Christmas dinner. Can't do that on the football field. You can't do that on the football field that way. So it was our returner. He called the fair catch, went over his head, and the guy decided to tackle him anyway. So it looks like I'm thinking that'll probably be a 15-yard penalty. And once again, they would have had him back at the 34. Personal foul defense and that's gonna they were able to flip the field with that punt of 37 let's go with a 63 yard punt that is now gonna be eagle ball at the their own 49 yard line so that was a huge difference there once again good field position for the eagles 1150 to go I think you're going to see a pretty conservative ground game from the Eagles right now. One more score might put it out of reach, but they're going to make sure well, they the take some time off this clock. The clock just as much of an issue for Belton as yep. the score. They've got Jackson White, so they're playing two opponents. Basically. That's Jackson White up the middle. Picks up probably three yards. He's in uh, on the 48-yard line in Belton Pirate Territory. And both second of those down and have seven been running a lot today and can you hear that clock go tick 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 even though I don't know if it ticks either going back to your winding of the clock thing yeah. uh, second down and seven Cole Keller takes the snap it goes to Wyatt up the middle and he just keeps running forward like Jackson Wyatt does that is an 18-yard gain. You know, both he and Keller had over 800 yards to start the game. Yep. I don't think either of them are quite at 1,000, but we're likely going to see 2,000-yard carriers yeah. for the Eagles this year. Wyatt's a junior. will be back next year, and that's a great building block yep. to have. And once again, I think he needs to buy gold watches for his offensive linemen for the for the work they've done this year, but I don't think we do that at the high school level like the pros do. Um, first and 10 for the Eagles at the Belton Pirate 30-yard line. Here's where a lot of drives have gone to die for the Eagles. Yep. Let's see what happens here. This game could easily be an absolute blowout already if the Eagles offense had taken yep. advantage of some more of their opportunities, but the defense has made up for it. Yes, and once again, penalty on the Eagles there. Oh, wait, timeout for the Eagles. Didn't like what he saw. Coach, it's first and 10. Let's see where we're at for scores. I'm going to refresh. Hey, Belton, or Grain Valley's up over Belton, 15 to 0. Liberty North over Blue Springs South, 34 to 3. Ouch. Yeah. Um, let me see what else we got here. <laughs> Fort Osage, William Christman still listed in the second quarter. In the fourth quarter, Odessa's beating Harrisonville 51-8 to now. So not a lot of changes going on there. I'm not even going to look at the game stats because they're probably scary. Uh, Lee Summit cut the gap to Staley, losing 21-14. Uh, we're going to get to see Lee Summit's quarterback, Tommy Locke, his cousin, 
Drew Locke will be playing against the Chiefs this weekend. Yep. So uh, the Cousins, uh, Lee Summit's down 21-14 to Staley. Lee Summit West, 21-0 over my daughter's team, Lee Summit North. Liberty up over North Kansas City, 24 to seven. And that is Keller keeping it, shakes off the first tackler and gets another five yards to make it second down and five. And once again, I'm not sure how many hits uh, he wants to take. Grandview, they still list as ahead of Oak Park. Park Hill, late in the third quarter, has shut out Ray Moore Peculiar and their stud quarterback, Conrad Hawley. That's a surprise, still 13-0. Platte County still up 7-0 in the third quarter. Raytown's now up over Truman 34-12 in the third quarter. Rockhurst still over Blue Springs 28-13. Ruskin has extended their need over Ray South 27-16. Could get their first win tonight, Ruskin. I believe they're still winless. And uh, Smithville over Winnetonka 33-0. And Cole Keller got dinged up a little on the play. He's standing. He's not getting medical attention, but he comes off the field on the play. So now we're going to see Bosserman potentially again. I believe it's Bosserman there at quarterback, number 15. And he has been in that position before. He keeps the ball, runs right up the middle, and picks up about eight or nine, or about 11 yards and a first down for the Eagles. First and 10 on the 14. And here comes Keller back in. He is not going to sit out. They'll have to hold him down on the sidelines to keep him out of that game. Which we generally frown on holding down the players on the sidelines. Okay, so Keller is back. Bosserman leads him to a first down. Now Keller's back, first and 10 on the 14-yard line. He keeps it himself. If that's injured, I don't want him healthy. He picked up eight yards, but once again, a flag is thrown. Looks like late on the play. Um, let's see what it is. We're all waiting. It felt post-possession to me, but usually that's a holding call where it's at. Call on the play. Personal foul. Defense. So once again, it's one of those... Off the ball penalties where kids aren't holding their temper. Um, both sides have had that. That's supposed to be a 15-yard penalty, half the distance to the goal. And they threw another flag right there, I believe, on the player they called the penalty on. Um, wasn't happy about the play. And uh, I think he's going off the field right now, but they had two penalties. That was unsportsmanlike. So it was half the distance to the goal line and then another half the distance to the goal line. So I think that means they put the ball kind of wherever they want randomly. That should be an automatic first down. So it should be first and goal right around at the, the five yard line. Well, that's where he was before, right? Oh, they yep. moved it backward. I see, right. Cause, yeah, well, okay. I don't know what they did there. It's first down in goal. Oh, now they moved it, so it's first down. So that was a two and a half yard penalty, and I've not seen so many less than five yard penalties in my entire life. Uh, so the Eagles have it first and goal on the two and a half yard line uh, for that all important third score. The Grain Valley Eagle fans are nice enough to give the uh, referees advice throughout the game. I appreciate that. And that's Keller right up the middle. Quarterback sneak for a touchdown to make the score 21-0. That might just be the nail in the coffin. As, uh, yeah. That's now a three-score game with... Nine minutes remaining, nine minutes yeah. Go, so. Eight minutes, 54 seconds remaining. On to try tough. the extra point, Pierce Janes uh, has been pretty successful this year. And the kick is up, and good. 
to make the score 22-0, three possession game, which includes a couple two point conversions if they get it. I do not know if the Belton player was just removed by his coach or uh, possibly removed from the game. I'm not sure on that. But the Eagles will be kicking off here, the sophomore Schmidt. So as the Eagles head to there, they're going to have a week off, and it looks like they'll be the number one seed in the district. Yep. Although they were beaten by Raytown, Raytown has less points than them. If you're within one position of each other, well, and they have the more team head-to-head well. head goes ahead. But because Belton beat Raytown, we beat Belton, and Raytown beat us, None of that goes into effect. Well, so and Raytown has more losses. That, that they trumps do. everything. Correct? But if they were the seed right next to the Eagles, they would pass them if we hadn't beaten Belton. Because really? you can't you can't be below a team you beat head to head. That was kicked huh. up to the twenty yard line. Great coverage there. He's brought down at the twenty five by the Eagles. That is one of my favorite players, Gage Forkner on the stop. Uh, sprinted down the field, the junior linebacker, who's going to be counted on. There are four senior linebackers right now, and he's going to need to be counted on next year, uh, not just to play special teams, but to be one of the starting linebackers. Um, so he made that stop there. That was a five-yard kick return, and we have first and 10 for Belton on their own 26-yard line. And this is, once again, do you run the ball, which is your bread and butter, or do you try to pass the ball down the field quickly? I, I don't know. They're running low on time. They are running low on time. They do the end round, and he's off to the races. They got a big chunk of yards there. Shedding tacklers, that is a about a 23-yard gain to the 48-yard line. So Belton first down on their own 48, and you don't have to run the ball, or you don't have to pass the ball when you can run it for 23 yards. They are picking up their pace coming down the field. That's one of their most positive gains today, that's for sure. Belton sends their man in motion, drops back to pass, and that pass is complete. Uh, about a seven-yard gain, and then... Uh, then Keegan Hart uh, takes him down to the ground. Second down and three. So second and three yards to go. Gerke leads him to the line. Gerke is a junior. Both twins obviously will be back next year. It's amazing coincidence the twins were actually born on the same date. How likely is that between two brothers? Ball's thrown deep, but not much is happening there. They do call a flag for illegal contact downfield. I think they're going to call illegal contact on the defender. They were about 15 yards away from the pass, but in high school, I don't think that matters. They call pass interference on the defense. That's, That's a 15-yard 15 15 penalty. Regardless. Will be an automatic first down yep. at about the 30-yard line. Once again, the Eagles fans are kind enough to give the referees advice on that call. Um, always trying to teach here at Grain Valley. First and 10 for Belton at the Eagle 30-yard line. This might be as deep as they've been in the game. Is that correct? Oh, no, they had the well, one field, had goal. The field goal. Two field, two goal, field goal attempts. attempts but so. I don't think they. I don't know that they've been inside the 20, though. I don't that think they've is been true. The so they're zone. first and so they're 10. about as close as they've Gotten. Sending a man in motion, drops back to pass, and there's nothing there on that pass. So, um, second down and 10, that was the sophomore Keegan Hart, who's really been all over the field yeah. today uh, defending. He kind of, you know, like I said, up at the line. yep, it's, it's uh, you have young players, and at first they think a lot and they try to make their plays, and you get to a certain point where you just see the ball and play football. He's always been a real intelligent kid football-wise, but you see him really, he's trusting, he's one of the fastest kids on the team, he's trusting that speed right now. Okay, handoff up the middle to Dominic Thomas, and that's a great form tackle by, guess who, Hunter Newsome. 
going to be an all-state linebacker here. He, by the way, did a great job. Combining his solos and assists uh, could very easily get to a, He came in tonight with 82, if you combine them, so he could very easily get to 100 uh, if the Eagles can. He's probably close to 90 tonight. And then, yes, uh, and with the playoffs in play, yeah. uh, Hunter Newsom's well on his way. He is a tackling machine. Another run around end, and it's a good gain on the play. Uh, it is a five-yard gain to the 24. Fourth down and four. Okay, you are Todd Vaughn and Sam Horrell. Okay, what are you calling here? It's fourth and four. Your turn to call the play. Let's hear it. Well, I think those end of rounds are about the most success they're ha they've had, and they've just got to keep the chains moving here, so we'll see. But they've had some decent success on the short passes, too. And that is a handoff right up the middle to their big guy hold. He is not going to make it. Maybe a two-yard gain to make it fourth down and two. And how about that? I, th I believe the Eagles' defense, unless – I can't remember exactly where they got to on their field goal drives, but uh, they were both mid-long-range kicks. So th I believe they're – they might have held them out of the red zone yep, the, the entire game. And the Eagles are pitching a shutout right now, yep. and who would have expected that against uh, Belton's squad? Uh, this is the first time that Belton's really been uh, held down. I think the least points they scored this year, maybe 22, by a very good Raytown team. I guess they only beat uh, St. Joe Central 14-7. 14 to 7, yeah. That is a long road trip, by the way. Yeah. You're going to a JV basketball game in St. Joe Central on a weekday is my definition of not fun. Um, that was a one-yard gain up going the up middle. Going for like Chiefs training camp, too. It's a, it's yep. a, it's a jaunt. So, second down, nine yards to go. I'd be shocked to see the ball put in the air at all. Uh, six minutes to go, and the clock's just ticking. I wouldn't like to see Keller carry the ball too much more as we don't need to get any more tread taken off those tires. Uh, remember, he went down late last year, and we went in, and Posserman did a great work, but in making it to the state quarterfinals, they did not have their quarterback. So that is Jackson Wyatt on the carry. And once again, positive yards. That is a 12-yard gain and an eagle first down on the 37. And I assume the Eagles are going to run the play clocks every time now down to the last yep, couple seconds. Yep, and they seconds. snapped it a little too early there. But, yeah, I would not snap it before three seconds left. Uh, on the play clock. Uh, 5.28 to go, and the clock is ticking first and 10 on their own 36. Uh, there's a lot of belt and two-way players that are really tired right now. They're still playing hard, but they're really going to have a rough time the rest of this game. Keller up the middle to Jackson. Only picks up a yard on the play, second and nine. Um... You know, uh, number 27 for Belton, Alex Hill, is doing a great job. He is an undersized nose guard uh, that relies on quickness and kind of hitting gaps. Right. Unfortunately for him, on the other side of the ball is Donovan McBride, who might double his weight. Um, and McBride is really, I mean, he is, this is his first year playing full-time offense, but is really doing a great job at center. Keller hands it off on the end round to Verlinick, cuts it up the field, picks up about four yards, and we have a third down and five, 420 to go. And um, so you're third down and five here. Do you run the ball again? I don't I think, think it's so. two down territory. Nah, I, I think, it, if anything, the way the time Or do you get some confidence is... in your passing game, try to make sure, because it's been a little off Perhaps, today. Perhaps, but... Again, I think you're comfortable punting the ball back and letting your defense defend yes. the long field one more time, too. There's not enough time for Belton to mount all the all oh, points. And, oh, a Belton uh, defense alignment jumped off sides. That might, that might be, be enough for the first down. It'll be inches if it's not. Yep. Oh, and it is a first down. That is a, that is a killer. They might not see the ball again, though. No, probably not. 
First and 10 for the Eagles at the 47. You wonder if they'll even call timeouts at this point. I mean, they don't have time to mount the kind of comeback yeah. they need. So, and, and let's be honest, this game might be the district championship game three weeks from now. I wouldn't be shocked to see yeah. this again. Raytown will give Belton a run for their money, and it would be hard to beat Raytown twice. But they um, did once. But they have done it once. That's Wyatt up the middle. Picks up two yards and maybe more importantly, hangs on to the ball there. Second down and eight. We have 3.15 to go. We've got the best technical crew here. We stayed on the air the entire day, unlike some other uh, <laughs> media. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the game. And uh, I'm, I actually got to admit, I taped Spectrum, and I'm going to watch it at home later. I don't like watching myself. I apparently have a high, annoying voice, which is true. You don't listen to, the, but, uh, to these what are you gonna afterward, do? these streams? Yes, exactly. Uh, second down and eight. I guess I'm Oh, just... the handoff wasn't there. And Keller. The second uh, time we've seen that. Yep. Something miscommunication. M miscommunication again, kind of running back went to the wrong side, and that brings up a third down and 10. We're now down to 228 to go. Is that That's a ghost back. That's what you call that. The, yeah, well, the ghost back did not take the handoff. No. Uh, Keller just kind of curled up at that point. Um, got a little extra shove at the end of it, but this is football. Um, and we've got a third down, 10 yards to go. I'll be interested to see what they do here. I still think it'll be up the middle to Jackson yeah. Wyatt, but we'll see. Maybe it. Maybe they'll. And it outside, is up the middle to nope. Jackson Wyatt. Picks up four yards. God, that kid keeps his legs moving. It is a fourth down and six at the 49, and there is a timeout by Belton. Well, they're not going to have a whole lot of time. No, they are not. And they're going to have a long field to cover, too, assuming Bossman gets off a. You know, he's only punted once today, but uh It was a doozy, wasn't better. it? Yeah. That punt might have been the one that really said this game's not going to be competitive yeah. the rest of the way. It got him down. It was only 13 to 0. It got him all the way down to the 1-yard line, and after the 3 4-inch penalties, Belton didn't get it out of there. Had to take the safety. Eagles got the ball back, scored a touchdown, yep. and I, I really nine, think that, that was a 9-point swing. I mean, and that's what good special teams does. Yep. So we've got Bosserman back to punt. Like I said, I always worry a little in the state quarterfinals. I believe Platt County blocked a punt where they rushed from the right side. But uh, Bosserman's been a lot better about yeah, not taking this is, six it, steps. Well, just, yeah, and it's it, it's less about the sideways thing. And a lot of times those guys are slower to get the ball off. He's generally been better at that. Yes. So, so and he punts, gets it off. Kicks in the air. It's not going to go as far. Fair catch called for, and I don't know what happened there. They did call a penalty that they were too close, and uh, they'll be a uh, he. They interrupted the halo around yeah, the, halo. the receiver, and that will be a penalty. So Belton will get the ball first and ten. But there's 141 to go, two timeouts, and I don't know if they're built for for a three touchdown comeback now. Uh, Gerke and his teammates are willing and they're working hard, but so I just don't know if they can get there. In violating the halo, they went too far beyond their call of duty. Oh my gosh. I refuse to do, those are kid video games. Those are, those wreck the lives of youngins. All of my, stuff. all they're of my, oh my gosh. Kid video games. All the teenagers in here doing the stuff, they're appalled. I don't think people my age even got the joke, but I'm hip enough to know <laughs> what you were saying. So, but calling myself hip is unhip, so we'll see what happens there. And someone jumped off sides. Both teams are pointing at each other. It wasn't me. It was you. Dead ball, false start on the offense. That's a five-yard penalty. He'll make it first and 15. They're at their own 36-yard line. They got 15 on the penalty. Uh, breaking that halo is a problem. And that uh, was a 15-yard penalty. They're at their own 36, trying to avoid a shutout.
Drops back to pass, throws it out. It's a four yard gain, but he's kept in bounds. That is Hart and Grant Ward on the tackle. Grant Ward and Keegan Hart, two underclassmen, combining on the tackle. That was a junior and a sophomore. Um, Ward is another one of those defense alignment that'll have to step into a big role next year. And that kept the clock running too. Second and 10, yep. Gerke keeps it himself, picks up about a yard. Third down and nine, one minute to go. And this should do it. The Eagles will just kneel on the ball and both Belton and the Eagles can celebrate a conference championship yeah. now as they are tri-titleists, tri-champions. Tri yeah, uh, uh, not dual, that means two. Not so dual, let's, yeah, because it's we've what, got what to is, add in the other team. Yeah, because like buy and try, I don't think is the term here. So, well, hold on. What, what that pass falls incomplete to number four, T.J. Smith. Oh, actually, it was for number six, Devin Floyd. You know, most of the belt and patterns are eight to ten yard patterns. So on a fourth and ten, it's hard for them to get enough depth, even if they complete it, to get a first down. We appreciate everybody joining us on the whole year. We hope we can continue this in the playoffs, but my guess is the Missouri State High School Activities Association will take over the broadcast, find out some way, but we're not sure how that works. But we should see you at home here in two weeks versus a potential opponent to be named. Yeah. Gerke drops back, rolls out, throws the pass. It is picked off by Hart again. What a game by Hart. Him in right there. Yep. He's got two interceptions today, numerous tackles. Um, you know, Grain Valley was not dynamic like you see him in other games, right. but this was a very workmanlike victory. Um, to the Belton fans out there, I think they have a great chance of doing well. First and 10 for the Eagles victory on their own formation. 36, 25 seconds to go. I think we'll see a kneel, and we appreciate you. And as soon as the clock runs out, we're running down, and I'm getting myself something to eat. So here we go, conference champions, eight and one regular season for both teams. Congratulations to all, and that will end the game.